Grandma, how you doing? So where are you now? What? Where are you? Grandma, I'm I'm at the bar right now. I, I I'm doing a podcast. You're on it. <laughs> oh God. Well, you know Sorry. that grandma, that's what I just got done talking about Grandpa Bob. You know? Oh, did you? You remember when he said to me, Charlie, marry the first time for money and the second time you marry for love. You remember when he said that to me? Yeah, I do. I do. And then I... He told everybody that. What's that? He told all the grandchildren that. He did, but, you know, he married you and you didn't have money. So what happened there? (laughs) He thought I had money. Yeah, that's what he says. He says, Grandma lied to me. <laughs> is that Aunt Mary in the background too? It is. Hi, sir. Uh, hey, Mary. How you doing? I'm I'm always great. You should know that. Are you guys in the car together? We are. Who's driving? Not me. <laughs> oh, jeez, Louise. How you feeling? I know. You feeling good? I feel better. A lot better than I was. Uh, am I gonna cut up, come up there and cut your grass on um, on Saturday? Are you coming Saturday or tomorrow? I thought. Well, I mean, Saturday is uh, Saturday works. But if you want me to come tomorrow, I'll come up early and cut your grass. Charlie, you just you just texted me that you're coming up tomorrow. Yeah, I forget what day it is, Mary. Jeez. Oh my goodness! No, I'd rather you came up Saturday. Well, what, what are you doing? Well, I'm working, Mary. You know, I'm I'm working, and now I'll come am upset. I, am I really on this podcast? Yeah, you're on the podcast. We got Miles here too. Miles, say hi. Oh, his mic doesn't work. Hi. How we How we doing? Oh, he's the phone. He's, mic doesn't work. He says, "How we doing?" Miles wants to know how you guys are doing. Where are you guys going? We're on our way home. Home from where? You know why? Festival food. Well, today's my day. You know, I get my hair done and get nails done. Oh, you're getting all pretty. I like that. <laughs> yeah, cheese, Louise, Grandma. You know, what are you getting? What are you getting all dolled up for? You got a hot date tonight? What's going on? No, no, no. Well, you know, my nails break if I don't have um, something on them. So, and. Uh, I'm too old to do it myself, so I just go and treat myself. Maybe well, I think I'm old enough to treat myself. Yeah, you are. And then if Mary pisses you off, you can just stick those claws right in her. Really nice, Char. Yeah. Charlie, maybe you can come up and paint her nails sometime. <laughs> I'd pay money to see that. I'd paint her nails. I, I got all the good colors here. We could do a little video on that. All right. Well, consider it done. I'll do grandma's nails the next time. Toenails, too. Oh, jeez. No, Mary, you're doing the toenails, okay? Where are you going? I'm driving home so we can talk to them. Oh, oh, you're going on a nice extended trip, huh? Yeah, we'll make this a long lunch hour. Oh, my gosh. Well, you guys are best uh, guests on the Bellied Up podcast now, so uh, that's fantastic. Oh Goodness. Uh, a cute invert, the belly duck. <laughs> yeah, you're bellying up to the bar with us. That's how it goes. I got a question I though about it was the Cripes podcast. <laughs> it's the Cripes cast, Mary. Thanks for getting the damn Follow title. Follow Cripes cast right? wherever all podcasts can be Miles. found. You hey. know what? Don't screw that up. All right, Miles has a question for you. So I got a question okay. about uh, Charlie's lawn mowing skills. What are they like? Is he the best you can find? Uh, He's terrific. He really is. You know, that's not true. We've never seen him do it. (laughs) Oh, you've never seen me do it, Mary? What the hell are you? What are you? uh, What are you drinking? I have not seen you mow the lawn. Okay, Charlie, her memory is bad. Yeah. Uh, Hang on. We're plugging you in here. All right. uh, All right. Keep talking. Can we hear you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mary, th- I was just up there cutting the grass. Okay. Charlie, and you, you yelled at me not. for running he over. Was, he was too. No, he was. He was too. 
Yeah, Mary, because I ran over all those signs, remember? Does and he, you got mad oh, at me. That's right. You took my signs down. I took them down to mow and then accidentally oh, no ran kidding. one over. I remember that. And the mow job was not good, Charlie. <laughs> oh. How, were the lines no. not straight? I'm telling you, there was a lot of uncut grass left. There was oh, no. I, I, okay, the lines might not have been straight, Mary, but there was no uncut grass. Okay, he I take. No, he did not go around the trees at all. And oh, there was geez. there was a lot. Well, don't listen to no, her. I, Grandma, I'm pissed right now. That we had a walk. Mary, let me tell yeah, you this Charles? much. Let me tell you this much right now. First of all, how much was that lawn cutting service? Huh? What lawn cutting service? Oh, <laughs> wow. You get what you pay for, I guess, is the moral of the story. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Mary, I've I've just uh, well, don't honey me now, Mary. Charlie, I love you. Oh yeah, now you love, love me. Love well, I like honey. you, Mary. I like you a lot. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Question, Charlie. She loves you. I don't think so. Oh, yeah, sir. Yeah. This well, is, this is actually a good moment here. We're uh, yeah. we've been giving out advice to people across the Midwest on our podcast. I'm wondering if you guys have some advice for us. Yeah. What's your advice for us? We uh, This podcast, we give out advice. That's the point of it. So we but want I, your advice. I don't think you want our advice. So I think no. we'll, we'll take okay. the advice that you got. And it better not be keep a- your mower straight. <laughs> how, how about, um, uh, let's see. What, what, give me a topic, Char. Be, um, Miles, give him a topic. Don't have it be Miles, marriage. Give us a I topic. was going to say relationship advice would be great. <laughs> Um, I would say don't take Grandpa Bob's advice and do not go for money. It never works. It never works out. You never know when you're being lied to. That's true. And let me tell you, I agree with that wholeheartedly. All right. Well, Grandma, what's your advice? I would say you have to marry for love. Marry for love. Yes, no, not money. Not Grandpa money. Bob was high when he gave that. He was high? Yeah. High on what, Mary? I, what was was he smoking weed? <laughs> well, that'd uh, be drunk. <laughs> now I, I now I find out Grandpa was smoking the pot. The devil's lettuce. Grandpa never smoked the... the uh, oh, the boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Mary, you are digging no. yourself into a hole now. I know. I dug it. Yeah. Well. Grandpa never smoked the weed, but <laughs> God only knows what was in his drink when he, he said that. Yeah, probably a lot of brandy. Um, what now? Grandpa always used to when he was uh, looking to relax, he would sit in a chair in the garage. Why did he do that? He, it was outside the garage because he always did that when he was a kid, Charlie, and he looked at the cows. He used to say, I used to watch the cows go by. Now I'm watching the cars go by. Very profound. Very yep. profound. You know, when he was five years old, he brought uh, Laura's had cows across the street. They owned a farm and they hired him for a nickel a day to bring the cows in. A nickel a day? Wow. No day. wonder he needed to marry Rich. Yeah, he was only making a nickel a day. You see where that came from. That was about 1938, 39. 38. So that nickel won't go very far. It doesn't anymore. When, when my mom and dad got married, Char, my mom's dad said, I don't think you should marry Bob because he's blue collar and you're white collar. Oh, jeez. <laughs> How is she white collar but didn't have any more money? That's what I'm thinking. I, I'm like. Fond du Lac white collar means something different, I guess. What was. He, oh, my goodness. Why did she say that? What was he talking I am so about? Upset with her. Yeah. It's- <laughs> you know, it was the best thing I did was marry Grandpa. And my brother Joel agreed. You're, I mean, seriously, Char, my mom's dad didn't have any more money than my dad's dad did. <laughs> well, you know, it's all about perception, isn't it? Yeah, 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 that's for sure. 
So your relationship advice is don't marry for money. Don't take Grandpa Bob's advice. Don't take Grandpa Bob's (laughs) advice. Well, that's great advice, guys. That's my advice. You got any more advice for us or no? Could be about anything, Um, life, whatever. Um, when you buy a dog, buy a miniature Shih Tzu and call him Reagan. Oh, this is Mary's dog, Reagan. He's so small. He looks like freaking musky bait. Literally, you just strap that collar to some hooks and you could get yourself the biggest musky on Lake Winnebago. You know, Charlie, he's got a complex because when you're around, he feels like there's going to be a hook put in his back and he's going to be thrown in the lake when a bag. Well, he shouldn't dress up like musky bait. So, and <laughs> I've got a, some advice for the audience. Don't buy really expensive winter coats for your dog. How does that sound? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, honest, that dog's got better coats than I do, Mary. <laughs> He's Are got better coats than you do. Seventy-five dollar coat I yeah. bought for him. Seventy-five bucks, <laughs> Mary. He uh, uh, he's like four. Your father used to work long. for a nickel a day. You know how many days that would take to buy that coat? <laughs> yeah. What would Grandpa Bob say if he knew that you were spending seventy-five dollars on a dog coat? He would have been proud of me, Charlie. No, he would not have been, Mary. Not for that. Jeez. Oh, that's all, all right. That's all pretty good advice, Charlie. Yeah, that is pretty good advice. Well, thank you guys for uh, giving. I think, all right. I think we, I think we did well on this podcast, Char. Have us on again. Yeah, I will have you on, Mary. And maybe the next time you come on, you can remember when I cut the freaking lawn. How does that sound? <laughs> that's right. Cheers. Okay, it's a date, Miles. It was good to hear from you. Yeah, yes. good, good to talk. Is Charlie cutting we the grass it. tomorrow or Saturday? I don't know if we ever established we're, Saturday. We're not quite sure. Saturday. Hey, Charlie. Yeah. We're taking the signs out before you come. Oh. Yeah, we're signing them. <laughs> Why don't you just take them out forever? How does that sound? No, Charlie, uh, your last your last note about the machete. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're not doing that. I wasn't going to. Was, I don't. There's no machete there anymore. What happened to that machete, by the way? Who got I that? I don't know. Somebody raided the garage and took that. <laughs> I got the drill press. That's pretty nice. Yeah, I was wondering where that was. Yeah. Well, I'll bring it back if you want it. No. I no. I need it, Char. <laughs> oh, Charlie, by the way, while you're on podcast, I have to <laughs> compliment you on the sale of the boat. Oh, yeah. We sold that boat. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was sweet, Char. State oh, Fair show. Goodness. We sold the boat. Okay. 10000 What was, was it? 16 16000 16000 bucks. It all went to CVI, Center for Veterans Issues in Milwaukee. Great organization. Love you can that. donate to them. Ah, thanks for bringing oh, that up. Great. That yeah. was great. That was a uh, Your grandma a should be your PR agent. I know. That was great. Yeah, yeah, that was really great. Yeah. Thanks, Grandma. Appreciate you wanna, that. You want to be Charlie's PR you agent? You know what? She you, Here's why she brought it up, because she's just happy I got it out of her freaking driveway. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was sitting in there a little too long. Oh, oh gosh. Well, that's oh, well, okay. Anyway, it was great. Grandma, I got a uh, a snowmobile that I'm going to bring over there uh, come the winter yet. When oh, ever, my when goodness. Is Rufus this, is getting a boat is for this, next year. Rufus says he's getting a boat, but he's been saying that yeah. for a while. So we'll see if that yeah, happens. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, he's kind of cheap. Yeah. Charles, Charles, your snowmobile like your last car and your last boat? Are you talking about the rabbit or the uh, yep, rampage? The rabbit. Uh, you mean, well, is it currently broken down in my garage? Yes, it is. It just, all it needs is new spark plugs, Mary. You know what? I'll trailer it up there and we'll fix it together. That'll be a fun That's bonding right. moment. I uh, am waiting yeah. anxiously for that, Charlie. I can't wait. All right. Well, I'll bring it up, Mary. Okay, maybe I'll bring it up on uh, Saturday. All right? And I'll just all leave right. it in the drive right. until uh, until the winter comes. All right. Okay, well, bring Bring Miles with you. I'll bring right. Miles. He'll be there. Okay. All right. Real All right. good. Love I'll you guys. You, Watch love for deer. Well, I love you, Grandma Mary. I like you. Okay. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Talk soon. Bye bye. Ah, that was nice. That was a very wholesome moment. 
It's very wholesome. Your aunt and grandmother sound exactly the way I think they would sound. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. That's great. They're, uh, I mean, that, hey, that, you got to do a better job cutting your lawn. Okay. You yeah. can't. First hey, of all, Mary's nothing's worse than balls. Because she, what she's in, she's in a spot where she's f- like, oh, Charlie comes and does it for free. But she doesn't know how to tell you you're not doing a very good job. First of all, I'm doing, doing it for uh, free. I'm doing an adequate job. All right. I, adequate job. Because uh, now I'm not a lines guy. I don't care about the lines. So I do go a little willy nilly from time to time. But that's the way I've always been. I've always been a circular guy. <laughs> I, I go in circles. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. <laughs> you don't go in circles? No, you don't want to go in circles. Why not? It just, it, I don't know. It's just very amateurish. I mean, okay, can I tell you this? Grandma Seuss grass, mostly clover and crabgrass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's like, is not the lawn. A lot of dandelions. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, it's, yeah. we've got a weed collection there. Thistles, I mean, you walk, you walk lawn through barefoot. Is, lawn is maybe not, it's more of a field. It is a field. Yeah. yeah we've got, um, which is fine. A lot of native species, a lot of invasive species, you know? Yeah. All right. There, there's never been a pesticide on that grass. Not because anyone's a hippie, just because no one is. No uh, one cares. No one's paying that money. <laughs> yeah. My grandpa would never pay money for them to come spray what on the lawn. <laughs> the hell's the difference? You know, is <laughs> that kind of guy. Just keep your shoes on. The thistles won't get yeah, you. Uh, you he'd know? go barefoot. He just had calluses for days. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, All right. Anyways, who do we got on the line? It's Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. How are you? Where are you calling in from? Uh, Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota. Where in Minnesota? <laughs> uh, Dakota, actually. Small town. Dakota, Minnesota. Is it? I like the rhyming Yeah, we there. just actually saw you. We just saw It's right by La Crosse, Wisconsin. Oh, sure. We saw you in October. Oh, thanks for coming out. Did you have What'd a good you time? What did you think of the show? What did you think of the show? <laughs> it was great. Very. It was fun. I wanna, uh, what was his worst joke that he had? Yeah, I'm curious about that, too. I don't think there was one. Oh, See, Miles? Come on. I keep trying to tell Miles <laughs> I'm a funny guy. He doesn't believe it. But, you know, maybe one day. Think, Miles is funny, too. Yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, shucks. Know? Jeez, Louise. <laughs> well, why don't you belly on up to the bar with us and, and tell us what's on your mind? Um... I just have a question. Yeah. <laughs> I My boyfriend is a very, very avid deer hunter. Okay. And um, in 2020, he got a pretty, pretty big buck. Good for him. He's still talking about it. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm sick of hearing about it. <laughs> <laughs> he was on a couple podcasts. He was in the paper. He was in Northern White Tail Magazine. Oh, you're you're married to a, or yeah. you're dating a rock star yeah, right he didn't now? Tell us that. Yeah. Why didn't you didn't he didn't say <sighs> that we were uh, that we had Mick Jagger? Yours was your boyfriend. Oh, I'm just. <laughs> You're, yeah, you're exhausted. I, I, <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm very happy for him. He d- he puts in all the hard work, but it it gets to his head. Okay, it gets to his head. Now, can I ask just before we go further, why did he end up in all these things? How big of a buck did he shoot? Uh, I was a twenty five or twenty five <sighs> pointer. Holy smokes. Charlie, you realize this is exactly what you wanted to call in and not talk about. Oh yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. It was, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was a. 215 and 5 non-typical score. Oh, jeez. Oh, Holy Louise. smokes. All now, right, well, where, now we're, where, we're not where gonna... did he shoot it at, though? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a secret. Oh. Here in Minnesota. Oh. oh. Little deer honey hole. Okay. See, huh? Wow, we thought we could get that out of you, you know. He's uh, trained you well. No. <laughs> yeah. Did he even uh, tell I've been you? I've him for a very long time. So you got you got it mounted in the house then, or what's the what's the whole thing with that? It's out in the man cave, out in the shed. Okay. okay. Did he do a shoulder mount? Did he do a full body? Might be a full body type of one. Yeah. He almost did, but he didn't. It was just about sh- half half mount. Yeah, the shoulder mount. Did he try to put it in the living room? No, nope, he's got all of his deer. He got actually three deers, his biggest deers this year. 
two in November and one the biggest one in December. Oh my, twenty twenty. Wow. Ah, Charlie. Uh, yeah, sorry. She didn't sorry. want to talk about. Yeah, this. we're not talking about this. Okay. Well, why <laughs> why did you call in? Do you know what he shot it with though? Sorry, before we move on. Yeah, bow the big, gun. The, uh, muzzle loader. Mu- oh, he's a muzzle loader hunter. Okay. Wow. Good for him. He does it all. He he's does a, it all. He's a red coat. He's okay. a bow hunter, shotgun. Yeah. He I does mean, it all. I don't want to say this. It might make you uncomfortable, but I think I'm falling in love with him too. Ah. Uh, I get. I get. Well, what, I get where you're at. That's. What's, I've been dating him for 25 years. Holy smokes! And he's. Yeah, we've been dating since we were 14, 15 years old. Oh my! We have three kids. Why did you guys never get married? Um, that is his <laughs> his thing. I want to get married. He doesn't. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, now it's, it's hard because he's married to the game. You know, it's hard to be married to you and the why, game. Uh, that's why, yeah, that's why I need help. Oh. How in the hell do I get him interested in me? Oh. I was well, thinking maybe I need to borrow your guys's hunt the, that buck costume you guys wear. <laughs> I need to prance around the house and that. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> we uh kind of a uh, little uh furry revealing action. slutty deer costume. Miles, watch. Well, no, that's that's what she not she's not. I'm saying the costume would be well to get him interested. Is what I'm saying. Are Sorry. You, are yeah, you? I'm just I it's it's 24/7. He talks about hunting. He watches the videos. He does all his trail yeah. cams. That's everything. Do you know what kind of trail cam I he uses? I would just like just a little uh no. Uh, Miles, maybe. You, oh, okay. I would love to know his regimen on him. scent killing if he's got a whole routine. Miles, actually. can you stay on I'm track? I'm sorry, this guy. This is a gal who's trying to get her fella to see her uh, uh, for more than than just you know the deer. I mean, okay? he sounds like he's the Michael Jordan of deer hunting. I, if you had Michael Jordan's one of his wives on the podcast right now you'd ask her some questions about him okay i get it what, but- uh, not wife girlfriend sorry yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sensitive subject sorry. miles yeah hopefully someday hopefully someday okay well what what does he what does he say like when you say i think we should get married does he shut down right away or does he have a reason for not wanting to get married he kind of shuts down. Okay, well. He says he doesn't want to rush into things. Doesn't want to <laughs> rush into things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, he, Lord. He doesn't have an 18-year-old son. <laughs> yeah, it's smart to get him out of the house before you get married. That's a good move, actually. It's something yeah, with taxes or something. 18-year-old son, and then we have 10-year-old twin daughters. Okay. A little surprise. We thought you were getting one, got two. Um, Two for one, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Well, here's my question: What is your approach when you bring it up? Is it passive aggressive? Is it? It should be straight passive Adam? aggressive. After what is 25 it? years? She's probably tried I, everything. I've tried everything, and I just yeah, I've I don't even bring it up anymore. So you said earlier, everybody that we are around brings it up, and he just he gets he shuts down. Well, okay. This is a this is a I think a deeper. Well, I, uh, I I can also I think I can empathize a little bit with them because everyone was always on <laughs> me about popping the question, and every time someone asked me when I was going to do it, I would move it back further so that so I think you guys just need to stop asking them about it, and then he'll do it. Sounds like that kind of situation to me. Yeah, it might. I don't even bring it up anymore. Why do you why do you think he doesn't want to do it? If you had to take a guess. What's the line about the getting I the milk for free? The what? What's the line about that? You know what it is, Jared? Nah, I don't know. Keep you going. don't you I'll don't know? Up. Do you have any uh you you, you just got no idea there? No, because he just kind of shuts down. Oh my gosh! Well, um, yeah, yeah. W- well, uh, have you uh, have you ever tried? Yeah, ha- why buy the cow when the milk is free? That's the line. You know, it's probably his approach. Ah, yeah. oh, geez. You know, Miles. Well, I, look, I think I think that you kind of uh, have you guys ever gone to a, uh, you know, may here's what you do. 
Are there any? Um, here, okay, okay. You tell them that you've got a, a buck seminar that oh, yeah. a couple's buck seminar uh, and you did all your research there and, and you get this person, the person who's coaching the buck seminar, he's talking about bucks, but what he's really talking about is marriage. And that's the way to seep in. You know, the thing is, this guy loves deer and deer are, you know, I mean, they are not, uh, they are a polygamous species. And I think he's been spending too much time now, I'm not saying he's stepping out by any regard, but that, you know, <laughs> if he were a goose hunter now, goose, uh, they, they mate for life, you know, so Geese. maybe you can get them into yep. goose hunting. Mm, probably not. OK, okay. Um, Charlie, nice. He try. likes his deer. Yeah, he, he likes his deer. Yeah. Nice okay. try. Uh, I got another yeah. thing. It seems like he's turning into a little bit of a uh, media darling these days, huh? With all yep. the magazines and stuff, what I want you to do yep. is you're gonna you're gonna come up with a fake magazine, and <laughs> and it's gonna be called uh, Hunters: The Married Life, and you're gonna put articles oh. in there. You're gonna you show it to him, whatever. He's gonna start reading it, and it's like you're gonna have fake quotes like, "Wow." My hunting game has really gone through the roof ever since I got married. Tell you what, my after getting married, you just your body releases pheromones that attract deer. You know, you have articles about all that. I actually heard that's true. <laughs> that once you get married, you just you, uh, if you think bucks were coming to you before that, once you get married, holy yep. smokes. So you're going to do that and then they're going to reach out to him to have an article in that thing and then they're going to have to turn him down because he's not married and it sounds like he won't turn down any media opportunity that he can get so then you'll have to pop the question just so you can get in Hunter's The Married Life magazine. That is one way you could go. What do you um, think of that idea? Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's I will. A, I'll think about that. Yeah, she'll think about that. That means. Uh, have you guys ever had a <laughs> uh, a relationship uh, counselor ever get I into the mix the of this? Word, man. Well, I'm just asking. No, no. And they is don't. that a is that a hard no. no from him or a hard no from you? Their their counseling is he goes sits in a deer stand. <laughs> yep, that's yep, exactly. Okay, so you've never brought up counseling. No, nope. No, what ha what do you think would happen if you did? Uh, he'd be willing to try, but he would. I don't think we need counseling. Yeah, what the heck, Charlie? Well, I'm not we're happy. We're very happy. No I one just would like to take it a step further. Yeah, no, I'm not, look. Everyone's everyone looks at counseling and they're like, oh, it's so bad. But you know, everyone's got these like weird issues in their head that sometimes they just need to talk out. You know, and maybe he's got like a mental block. Uh, about getting married and you just got to get to the bottom of it. I don't think there's any shame in talking to someone about that. You know, He's getting the milk for free, Charlie. That's nah. what it comes down to. Well, no, Miles. I, I, I <laughs> what do, do you think? That's crazy. You don't. It seems like you don't want no. to do a counseling thing. Maybe. 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 Okay. We've given you. Maybe. I, I don't think you. No, first of all, we're not going to we find something she likes, Charlie. All right. right? It, it, but just so you know, you got to remember that you called into a podcast hosted by uh, a guy who's not yet married and a guy who's divorced. So we're probably the <laughs> worst people that you can ask about this particular situation. But we're going to try and get you something solid before we let you off the horn here. Okay. Do you go hunting with him? Okay. No. No. Oh, that's his thing. That's, that's his what, thing. Oh, what's your thing? I'm um, being staying home with my kids. Yeah, but you have like a hobby or anything? Not really. <laughs> I'm a homebody. I like to stay home. You know, yeah. that could be a good, that could be a good place to start. You know, I mean, maybe uh, you sort of explore. Um, you just start going out without him all the time. And then you'd be like, what's going on? You're like, wow, I'm not married. I don't know. I can go out whenever I want. Now mess with his head. Mm, yeah. <laughs> she is hating every piece of know. advice <laughs> that we get. Well, what, what, what kind of get, like you know? Oh, have you tried proposing to him? Come on. Have you tried it? There. Yep. Maybe I should try that. That's yes, it. There That's we it. go. And you know what? 
I'm looking at a website right now where you can get um, deer antlers made into wedding rings. Yes, I know. I've I've looked into that too. Oh, have you? Well, why do you don't... actually? But but listen. But you you would like to be proposed to? Is that is that why you wouldn't do the proposing? Are you opposed to proposing? Yeah, I'd like him to do it. You like yeah, him to well, do it? It sounds like that's never going to happen. I don't know. Miles, I it's, it's not. I've not. I think no. This, I think that this goes in the category of tough pills to swallow. <laughs> no, you know? My, Miles, this is a horse pill that's hard to go down. Miles, we are here to offer solutions, not to throw up our no, arms. And, and she's and calling us for a solution. And Miles. sometimes the solution is just a little bit of truth, Charlie. So she's just got to propose to him, you know? All right. Well, you know what? I think a, a, a good way place to start would be a, if you're if you, she wants him to propose to her. And I think a good place to start would kind of be like exploring like the things that you like to do and like what are your hobbies? You know, can you find something uh, that you're as passionate about as he is as passionate about deer hunting? And I think you can kind of like, a, you know, not to throw it all back on you, but, you know, you've been trying for 25 years to get this fellow to do one thing. But so maybe a different tactic, if you haven't tried it, is you just try to find yourself. What brings you the most joy? You know, obviously outside of your family and all that. But what, what do you really like doing? Maybe try some new things, you know, try some things you've always like. Oh, maybe I'd like that. But Charlie, haven't done we it. already tried Give the hobby go. angle. She didn't like it. No, but I think she'll like I'm giving it another a poll there, you know, like give us give us one thing that you like outside the family could be anything. Oh, boy. Um, I don't know. I just like hanging out with friends and family. Hanging out with friends and family. Do you like um, hiking at all? You like uh, getting How outdoors? How is that going to help her get married? Charlie? Just relax. I don't understand where you're going with this. Well, Miles, I wouldn't well, expect you to. <laughs> now, Miles and Miles and, and I, I are about to break don't up. Need to get married. I just want him to pay just a little more attention to me. No, than I, I got it. I got it. What does he love to do more than anything in the world? Deer hunt. Deer hunt. Deer you, hunt. You gotta make it a hunt for him. You gotta. Oh, yeah. Just, just get him in a situation where it feels like, you know, why would I, uh, why would I shoot this buck now if I know I can grow it a couple more years and get even a bigger rack on it? You know, why would I shoot it now? And that's his approach. You got to make it feel. Yep. It's it's not going to be true, but you got to make it feel like he's never going to get another shot at this buck, and he needs to take it now. Is what I'm thinking. Wow. Make it a hunt. I didn't think Miles would come up with any good advice in this, but I think he just did. I think he got it. Yep. All right. So what does that look like? What does that look like? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Just tell him that, like, oh, I'm taking the kids and leaving, you know, I usually will get the job done. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Well, I'll see. You're not <laughs> willing. You're not. <laughs> That's what it's going to take. He's be like, oh, okay, fine. I'll get, let's get married. And you're like, let's go. I was never going to leave anyways. Yeah. Well, All right. I mean, I don't want to be the guy I'll that suggests this. Stuff, she, but she's something. trying to get off the phone with us. She, she's like, this is a disaster. <laughs> yeah. She's like, what was I thinking? Calling these guys? Jeez, Louise. Well, how about this? Miles and I, when you guys get married, Miles and I will officiate the wedding. Oh, there we go. All right. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to make you sad. I feel like your energy was great when we started, and now you're sad. Yeah, we we really screwed no, the pooch I'm happy here. To talk to you guys. Oh, well, it was super nice to talk to and you. It makes you feel better. We truly were doing our best to help you. Though. Yeah, we, <laughs> we're, honest, we're just it's... we're just absolute idiots. So yeah. you may have called the wrong uh, the <laughs> wrong person to figure this out. But I do like Miles's thing. You know, uh, you know, you find. Find the, the, the thing that, uh, that you know, you like and, and kind of maybe invest in that into your side of it and just find find your thing, you know, and then that'll make you kind of he'll kind of be like, wait, what's going on there? You know, and you'll be like that buck thing. I don't know. I'm now I'm lost in words, but you kind of get the vibe. Yeah. And before you go, yeah, 
Before you go, what kind of camo does your husband wear? Oh, jeez, Miles. Are you sorry you're gonna call CrossFit to their boyfriend? No. Boy, Miles, <laughs> you know. He's... Because mentally I thought we made him your husband because we came up with such great ideas. God. Well, you know, Miles, you tried, and this is what happens when you try. Jeez Louise. Well, anyways. That's okay. You got anything you want to buy, sell, and trade while we got you on the deal? Yeah, all of her husband. <laughs> damn it. All of her boyfriend's <laughs> hunting equipment. No. No. I wouldn't do that, Tom. All right. Well, you seem like such a sweetheart, and you really do deserve uh, that uh, that ring. You really do. Honest to Pete. So we hope Thanks. you get it. We hope you get it. We wish you the best. All right. Someday. Someday. It's going to happen. <laughs> yep. Okay. Does that sound like you really believed it? But it is. I'm putting that out there. <laughs> also, All right. Tell your boyfriend Thank that you I'm a big fan. Big fan. Um, See ya. All right. I will. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Miles. <laughs> what? Jeez, At the end, Louise. I was not purposely calling him a, her husband. I, was that, I messed that up. I mean, I, I I thought I was giving good advice there, I, honestly. She wasn't really giving us much, you know, and you kind of start to wonder. No, I just I just feel like I start to wonder. And maybe we know how her boyfriend feels a little bit. He needs to be more open to things, too. Well, I, I, I just feel like, you know, if she, if uh, I don't know if she, if she found the thing that that kind of lit her up the way the uh, the hunting lights the husband up you know maybe the husband would be like intrigued by that or, or, or the like boyfriend or get shit. jealous you know or get jealous yeah <laughs> husband. no i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> oh man i mean let's be honest i don't think they're ever getting married no i think 25 they are. years he's gonna change i um, i think uh i mean she said dude she's calling I believe in that we call that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. She's calling into us to get advice. I feel like she's at a point. Uh, she's at a point of desperation if she's calling us. I know. You know, but she also wasn't open to any of our advice. Well, we're Other also idiots. She she did know? like to propose to him. I think she should do that. That's my final answer. Okay, with a with a uh, antler ring. Yeah. Mm, there we go. All right, take another caller. I, uh, I mean, she said, "Dude, she's calling." I believe in, that we call that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. She's calling into us to get advice. I feel like she's at a point. At, she's at a point of desperation if she's calling us. I know, you know, but she also wasn't open to any of our advice. Well, we're Other also than, idiots. She, she did know? like to propose to him. I think she should do that. That's my final answer. Okay, with a with a uh, antler ring. Yeah. Mm, there we go. All right. Take another caller. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who we got on the line? Hello. Hello. Who do we got on the line? Oh. Oh, wow. I'm really surprised. Hi, my name's Ethan. Nice to meet you guys. Hey, Ethan. I thought you were surprised. Sorry. Oh. Uh, he's you he's, su he's, he's surprised. I'm off. Miles. <laughs> Ethan, oh, what's, what's going Miles. on, man? Belly on up to the bar. Tell us oh, what's man. on your mind. Big part of my life's coming up. I uh, met this fine, this fine woman. We've been going on for quite some time now. Uh, I think around like six, eight, nine months, something like that. And uh, she popped the question, hey, you want to get a house with me? And I said, you know, I think that'd be pretty cool. I think that'd be pretty fine. Uh, you know, here's the thing, though. She lives up in the good old Kansas City. I live out in the country about. I don't know, an hour and a half drive to and from. So we're trying to find a house, but we just don't have enough time. Now, I live with my father. Granted, he's around seven years old. And uh, I just find it a little bit, you know, embarrassing, you know, just to have a woman over living in this house with me, with my father, seven years old. I, I just think it's a little bit embarrassing, a little bit awkward. Maybe I'm just thinking about it this way. What do you guys think? No, it's definitely a little embarrassing, a little awkward. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we just, we kidding. just had a cop. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> uh, 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 Miles, will you grow up? 
Can you treat our guests with some respect? Oh, I'm so sorry. Good I'm Lord. So sorry. There's nothing embarrassing no, about sorry. it. No, no, no. No, I actually was going to say it sounds like you and your dad got like a cool vibe going, a little bit like on the movie Step Brothers. Oh, we certainly do. Yeah, like you certainly guys do. you guys all shit with the door open, you make beef jerky, and now this girl's going to move in and ruin all that for you guys? I don't think it's necessarily ruining, but yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, I guess what you mean. It it's I just never really been like a uh, hey dad, here's my girlfriend or hey mom, here's my girlfriend at the time. I've always just like single dad out in my life. You've separated uh They're, girlfriends from parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's this is the been one. Like an uncomfortable part. But now this is uh, the one. Sure. Oh, sure, yeah. like oh, I think you need to be less uh-huh. worried about the moving in situation. We got a little bit of commitment issues. We got a little bit of commitment issues here. Okay, well, you do or she does? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? Who? She did ask you to uh, move in I, with I her. I guess I do. You do. Well, then don't do no, it. Okay, yes. Don't do it. What are you? What are well, you doing? Well, hold on. Let's well, move, I- let's hold on. Let's dive into what. What do you think the root of the commitment issues is? Is is it did something happen to you? Do past relationships? What do you think? Tell us about your childhood. Oh man. Okay. So ever since I was a child, my I had a crush on this one girl, and my sisters would always bug me, and be like, "Hey, I heard you got a crush. I got. I heard you got a crush." So I go, "Yeah, no, I'm not telling you guys. I've always been embarrassed about it." And then ever since. In the future parts, whenever I've tried to introduce my significant other to, like, any side of my family, sisters, my mother, my daughter, uh, not my daughter, my uh, father, um, within, like, a week or two or three, the relationship always ends. Either I break up with them or they break up with me. Uh, no, co- no, like, coalition with um, parents or anything like that. I just find it that that's always what happens. Correlation. Thank you. My apologies. And... I'm just afraid of her moving into my place and us having fights or something like that. I mean, every relationship has fights. Uh, this is completely normal about it until you get a divorce. Um, <laughs> um, uh, where was I? Burning me? <laughs> I forgot where I was. I, for, I forgot where I got. I forgot where I was. Yeah, Charlie all right. knows all too well about the fighting and the <laughs> divorce thing. All right, it happens, Charles. That's uh, all right. <laughs> He's consoling you now. <laughs> no, let, look, let's dive into no, this. No, I mean, that makes total sense. I mean, that's a very, uh, you're worried. It's kind of like uh, you're worried that if you commit to this, then it's you. the last thing you want is to get your heart broken is what you're really worried about. That and a little bit of embarrassment. I mean, I live with my seven-year-old father, so if I get in a fight, I'm going to go down to my kitchen. He's going to be sitting there and be like, that was the weather. Wow. <laughs> you know, yeah, he's, he's, my, paper my thin walls and his dad's like you come down after a fight and he's like oh god you're gonna need a drink after that here you go <laughs> what does your dad think and of then, her and then my next thing comes is and uh i'm gonna be honest with you guys uh she's coming over to my house about four five six times and they've had their awkward run-ins and i've just been so awkward and i just never introduced her to him and oh, how my. old are you I'm 21. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Here's no, that. we do that because you're so young. Yeah. That's why you're sighing, right? Yeah, that's you're, why I'm so- sighing. What are you... You're moving in with someone at 21 after three, four, five, six months. Also, you're not very good with numbers okay, well, or she's memory. she's moving in with me. She's, she's moving in with me. She's moving- Initially, it was like, yeah, we'll get our own house together. And then like, oh, yeah, my cousin will come in as well and we'll pay for the house. But then, you know, things become things, and later down the line, we realize, oh, well, situation, ideally, we can't do that. So, uh, again, like, her parents are kicking her out of the house, and she she doesn't have another place to go so to. So, she lives with her say, parents hey, you know, as well? See, my dad about it. A whole other so, story, yeah, my guy. Miles, come on now. It's 2023 now. In this economy, nobody can blame anybody. No, we're not blaming parents. you I'm for trying that. to get the facts right. So, she lives with her parents. You live with your parents. Correct? Uh-huh. And how old Single is she? Father, but yeah, she's 22. We were born the same year, but just like a oh, yeah. opposite end of the spectrum. She was January 14th on December 23rd. Okay. There's no judgment in that. No. Why is she getting kicked out of her house? Because she's 22 uh, years old. Well, <laughs> no, there's a story uh, here, well, dude. There's a story. Her parents really don't like her that much. 
Uh, me personally, I have a, a specific type of woman, a specific taste in women. I like them goth girls, and them goth girls are packed full of red flags. So those red flags turn into green flags for me. Um, so, I mean, you can you can go one on one together, you know, rebellious, uh, parents didn't really like her that much. As Angsty, the kind of, like, argumentative. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. What, exactly, you know? What was the straw that got her kicked out of the house? What was the final straw? Well, okay, she's not she's not entirely kicked from the house, but basically, um, oh, man, I don't know. It's, it's really just... Uh, just like a multitude of things she'll try to do her laundry and then she'll get you know yelled at for doing it like man come on i only got two days off and you expect me to clean this entire house i keep my solitude and i just keep myself to my room and my room only you guys expect me to do all this in the house granted i mean you guys are living me uh, letting me live here but like well that's all your guys i mean i imagine that her parents are like god you're you're washing all of your black clothes with all of our light colored clothes and it's bleeding on to my so pure white. So true, they just have so a bunch true, of Miles. gray sheets yeah. in that house. <laughs> just everything gets turned to gray. Um, what do you both do for a living? Okay. So me, uh, right now I work in a, uh, my, my job is plating. I take 24 foot steel barrels by like, uh, inch, two inches in diameter. Yeah. And I, uh, I, pick them up into a fixture and I scrub them on the inside and acid, uh, inside and outside with this caustic stuff. And I set them in a vat of acid and I plate the inside and outside with nickel. Mm. I get paid around like $16 an hour. Mm. Mind you, I live out in like, uh, out in the country of Kansas. Yeah. Uh, while she lives up in Kansas city and she gets paid like, Oh, $12 an hour at a chicken joint. She's at 12? a chicken joint. <clears throat> She's got no car, no bike. And I've been kind of supportive about it. Yeah. I mean, it's just difficult to make money up there. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you come on up to Fargo, North Dakota, where actually sixteen dollars an hour, oh. you can have your own place. You can, uh, you know, once in a while, sneak out to the bar, have a couple drinks on sixteen dollars an hour. I hear you, Betch is hiring. North um, Dakota is not real. North Dakota is not real. Come on now. Says the guy talking about rural Kansas. <laughs> Oh, now we got an argument. Yeah. Kansas. But, no, no, but hold on. He got loves arguments. He's there. dating an angsty emo girl. <laughs> That's fair. I usually just try to uh, shut up because I don't want a relationship going down the pits. She'll get all political. I'm like, yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing that with you. I'm just going to pop on some TV there. That's wow. always good. Avoid, avoid, avoid. That yeah. always usually goes well. Is your relationship going well <laughs> overall? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, our relationship is doing pretty well. How long have you been dating uh, again? So. Oh, around uh, six, seven, eight, nine months now, <laughs> give or take. <laughs> what is I'm bad with numbers. Such a bad with numbers. You're such bad a- with numbers or bad remembering when you started dating her exclusively? Uh, a little bit of both. I uh. mean, we both forgot when we first uh, uh, met up with each other. Uh, we were talking about it just the other day at like some ramen joint. When do we meet again? Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, me neither. You just want to say this date? Yeah, we'll say this date. <laughs> and what was that date? I don't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> 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 um, I actually, I would love to have both of you guys on the line. I think it would be an unbelievable yeah. dynamic. Yeah, loop her in. Can you merge her in? Oh, she's currently at work, unfortunately. She doesn't get out till 7. She it's can join for me at the moment. Working at Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Uh. Um, uh, worse. Go chicken. Go. <laughs> What's that place? I have no idea. <laughs> it's like on Anchorman Two when, when your guy on uh, Champ Bay or yeah Champ Bailey's serving bats instead of chicken. That's where she works. She works at Champ Bailey's Chicken Joint. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm uh, sure it's a great spot. Yeah. So uh, back to your question. Do you want, actually want our advice on if you should do this or what do I'm you want? I'm confused on what he's asking Yeah, us. what are you asking us? Because it's a terrible oh. idea for the record for you guys to move in together. But um, Oh, I, no, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I can, you, I, I just, you've I never just, introduced her to your dad? I, no, he's seen her well, in the well, house, but he's never properly really, introduced. 
kind of not really. I never properly, not never, but never properly introduced her. They've had like a couple run-ins, and I'm like, yeah, this is her. Anyway, have a nice day. It, it's, oh, I'm a very awkward person. So, I just never like put my my loved ones with uh, my family. So what does your dad say then? You know, the awkward run in. What does he say to you when you guys are alone about her? Um, he goes, dude, I got no problem with her, man. I mean, you do you. I'm probably the most chillest guy out here. You know, we and my father and I have a great bond and I'm very blessed for that. Not a lot of people have that, especially golf girls these days. You know what I mean? Um, but did, did, did your dad like grow it, up on the slopes? Yeah, or, or in or uh, in Long Beach, California? Dude, he he sounds, listen to the Grateful Dead. Did he he sounds, swore with them. He uh, sounds like a surfer. No, he's a stoner though. <laughs> so that kind of explains a lot. <laughs> he's a he's an IT guy. He's a big old programmer. He he didn't really go far. He's been landlocked his entire life, but he's gone through two divorces. Um, <laughs> the final one being my mother. Uh, and I just live with him. It's just two guys in this big old house. And just I just brought two, up the, two guys the in the hey, big old know. house, just smoking weed all day. Yeah. Hey, you know, that's how it be sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people say, oh, yeah, I just want to come home, have a nice, have a nice, uh, have a nice glass of tippy cow. And I'm like, hey, you know, give me a glass of tippy cow in a, in a big old joint. And I'm a, I'm a rock with that. That's my good nice uh, after work game. <laughs> I love how not doing much with your life. One of the describers of that was he's been landlocked his whole life. <laughs> he didn't have a seat. I mean, am I wrong? Am I wrong? I mean, I've been landlocked my whole life. I would say I'm land. doing all right. He couldn't get out there and, and find a boat and, yeah. and, and properly sail. <laughs> I mean, there's well, speaking of boat, we do have our own lake named after us. What's it called? Stoner Lake? <laughs> oh, it's just my last name. It's called yeah, Donor Lake. Yeah, it's called Boyer's Lake. B O Y E R. Uh okay. Fox Free S Lake. How'd you get a lake named after you? Uh, this is our property. Oh. So you guys like named the like lake a- after yourselves. No, 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 of course not. We had some like uh we had some like big old guys come Yeah, of course we did. Of course we did. <laughs> <laughs> big old guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. So you're doing this. <laughs> She's moving in. Yeah. I I suppose. I suppose. No. Okay. Let's let's commit to it. Okay. I know it's it's will freak you out a little bit to commit to it. Let's commit to her moving in with you and your stoner dad. And what I mean, okay. what's the dynamic gonna be like? Is is it's like who's cooking meals? Who's where's she gonna work? Okay. So here's the thing. I could get her a job at my job, but you know I don't think she'd do. One. But I don't you don't want, want that. that. <laughs> uh, oh, I definitely don't want that. She would embarrass the absolute hell out of me. Um, she's more Asian than uh, for context. I'm half Chinese, I'm half American. She's full white, and she's way more Asian than I am. She she's got ramen bowl teeth, noodles for a living. I'm over here like, damn! I just got out of work at. Seven o'clock. Where's my steak and curly fries at? I, I want my steak on the table. She's like, yeah, I just made some ramen. I got you some uh, sushi here as well. Man, get that out of here. I can only be Chinese on Tuesdays and Sundays. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, oh, I don't think either of us are in any position to tell you you're yeah. wrong. No, uh, I think I think you're right. I guess, yeah, <laughs> no argument. Okay, so, um, so where's she gonna so work? Why does, is it like that? Is she trying to? Does she feel like she's got to fit in with you, and that's why there's so much ramen and sushi? Or is this like that's actually just? Oh no, she, she just naturally like that. Okay. She just naturally likes that. I guess she's been with a lot of Asian folks. <laughs> okay. Okay. I I wonder why. I asked her. She goes, "What do you think I have a type in people?" And I look around the room. She's got nothing but like uh, uh, Asian posters. Like she, oh, she's unfortunately she's into K-pop. Me personally, I'm a '60s, '70s, '80s type of guy. I love me some. <laughs> uh, I love me some Boston. 
Uh, but she just absolutely loves that Asian stuff. She asked me, you, you think I have a type? I look around the room. I go, yeah, I think you like Asian dudes. She goes, no, that's not true. That's not true at all. That, that, that's not true. Um, so I think it's a little... Anyway, off topic here. Job. I'm just going to get her a job at Walmart. How does that sound, please? <laughs> I would do a fleet farm, but there's no fleet farms in Kansas. There yeah. you go. All yeah, right. I mean, that's the next, next one up. Well, oh. I suppose. I think, dude... You're going to be fine. Yeah. You know You're what? You're going to be fine. I was trying to give you advice. I think you should just give us advice. Yeah, I, I think, think I think at the end of the day, it's one of those things where you seem like you got a good sense of humor, and no matter what happens, just keep making jokes through the whole thing, I think, <laughs> is the move to do. Yeah. So true. Yeah. You know? So true. And get, keep us updated. Call, call us back with an update. We'd like an update on this. Yeah. I will. I'll let you know, and I'll in, get her on the line too next time. Yeah, in four, okay. five, six, seven, eight, nine months or so, one after you've moved in and all of that, you got to give us an update on how it's going. Yeah. What if her, your dad, uh, and her I think just it's hit like it off? Three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> oh, that'd be scary. That'd be scary. Well, he's not Asian, so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> um, Okay. Right. Yeah. But what do I, what do I do if I like, mean, I didn't mean that I didn't mean that split. she was going to hook up with your dad. I just meant like they were going to no, become no, buddies. No, I know what you mean, Miles. I know what you mean, Miles. <laughs> I'm just I'm just twisting your nuts. I'm just busting your balls. Don't worry about it. I'm just twisting your nuts. <laughs> That's a good one. Put that on teacher Miles. <laughs> Um, right. You should get a notebook and start writing down important things in it. That's my only piece of advice. Just the thing is, I'd things. probably do that for about like three hours and I forget about it, you know? Yeah, that's true. You know what? You're Forget <laughs> it. You got a system going. He'd smoke one too many joints and he'd forget about the whole thing. <laughs> oh, Someone man. say joint? Yeah. Well, there you go, man. I think you're good. I think you're ready for it. Um, there's no advice that we can give you at this point. I think no. that you just have to let it go. <clears throat> do you do stand up? I suppose. I suppose. You do comedy? Do I do stand up? No, but I've been thinking about it. You I've should been thinking do it. About it. I don't think I do very well, though. I think you would. I really want to become a voice actor. Yeah, you could probably do that. You should definitely try stand up ah. and just literally the stuff that you just said, just talk about your life and people will enjoy it. Yeah. Find yourself an open uh, mic in know, Kansas you have, City. You may have a point there. Yeah. Next time you're in Kansas City. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Well, next time you're there, find an open mic. Take your girlfriend. Actually, don't take her, um, but just go by yourself <laughs> and give it a go. Let us know how it goes. All right. We'll do. We'll do. All right. I appreciate good, the talk, boys. Yeah. <laughs> we do too. Y'all have a good one. All you right, too. you too. See ya. All right. Oh my God. I don't think I, there's any there's words to say, Charlie. To say. I think that guy was electric. I yeah. think that I want to kind of be his friend. I kind of it's, yeah. it's like you could tell we he, should he he's a very confusing guy because He's, his humor screams, I'm like successful, funny guy, but it sounds like he's struggling a little bit at the same time, you know? That's where the comedy comes from. Yeah, maybe. maybe We should uh, make him a guest host on the Bellied Up podcast. Yeah. Next time when we're in Kansas City, we mm -hmm. should do this show in Kansas City at some point. We should. We should do a bunch I just, of different cities. I, haven't, I don't swing through KC that much, no, but, but you we're going to have to. Airport in Fargo, right? Oh, God. Here we go. You know, an airport splain me right now. You know how those work, right? You bring your suitcase. Oh my gosh, y'all answered. Oh yeah, of course we answered. What's your name? Uh, my name is Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, where are you from? Yes. Um, I am originally from the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Nice. I could tell with that yeah. beautiful accent that you have there that you you weren't from, <laughs> was, you know, Skokie. <laughs> I was about to say, I just moved to Michigan, so some people have caught on to the accent. Some people like it. Some people don't. So oh. it's just kind of a hit or miss. Well, Come on. No one should not like that. Yeah, it's, no, don't pay attention to those people. Sounds exotic. Thank you. Exotic. It is. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. Hell yeah. We well, appreciate you. Why don't you belly up to the bar with us and tell us what's on your mind? Yes. So I... I feel like y'all have gotten this a lot recently, so if you don't want it, that's fine. <laughs> but, um, 
I just moved from Mississippi to Michigan four months ago. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm working with children with autism and I take care of dogs and I love it. It's amazing Um, work. Yeah. I don't know how to date Midwestern men. (laughs) Well, I don't either. So I'm going to have to tap out on this. Yeah. (laughs) Now I've dated a few and I can tell you this for starters. Okay. Now let's, why don't we, you know, Southern, Southern men are very different. What are Southern men like? Yeah. Let's talk to us about the difference between (laughs) Southern men, dating Southern men and dating Midwest men. Southern men are maybe, well, no, not maybe. Southern men are a lot more direct. Okay. You kind of like, they're, they're very, very strong. Like you kind of like, you know, when they're in the room, like you can, like they'll, they'll ask you on a date straight up, like no fear, no, Mm. like very fearless people. Yeah. Okay. Midwestern, I've learned. Are so we can fearful? Yeah. I don't we are know. weak yeah. and fearful. Well, thanks for people. calling in. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, go on. Tell us about Midwestern men. How now. weak are we? Yeah. I've and honestly, I don't know if it's me because because I am, you know, I am more southern. I, I'm a little bit louder, a little more energetic, and I don't know if I'm overwhelming someone. I don't know if it's my fault. But it kind of seems like with Midwestern men, I kind of scare them off. And so I was wondering if you have any advice about that. Well, we are a frightful, politeful well, yeah, uh, species. So you gotta so. I feel like I'm being so mean. No, you're being <laughs> honest, and we need to hear it. I, I think what you're trying to say oh. is we're a little bit more eloquent creatures than uh, the Southern men. Maybe they're a little bit more of a bull in a china shop. We're more of a, a deer in the woods, really. You got I would agree with that. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. We're, 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 we're still powerful, Charlie, right? Deer are powerful creatures. They can really gallop. They can get going. Yeah. They're beautiful. They're, They're beautiful, beautiful creatures. They get yeah. shot a lot. Um, <laughs> you know, so is, is it y'all, so- y'all are, y'all are very eloquent men. Very oh, yes. like, I, 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 I will say that Southern men can be a bit aggressive. So and I, I think in that I'm a little bit aggressive. And so it may be overwhelming. So a Southern man might come up to you at the bar and say, uh, what are y'all doing tonight? Why don't you come home with me? <laughs> would that be it? Whereas a Midwest guy would be like, hey there, how are you? Hey, I like your shoes. Yeah. Them are real good. Did you get those from yeah. the Coles with Coles cash? But it means the that's, same thing. I mean, that, that's, about, that's about right on the money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would, now, do you want a Midwest guy to come up to you and say, Hey, well, you know, geez, Louise, you want to come on over to my place tonight? We'll I listen did, yeah, to some I got, polka. I just smoked some beef jerky. Yeah, I smoked some nice beef jerky. Oh, I got that in my garage. You know, we can have some beef jerky. And not, I mean, if you're into that, you know. Yeah, I think I think on a first date, I, I wouldn't be coming over. But, no, I didn't. But I, but I love a good conversation. I love I like it when men approach me. But maybe it's just, I just kind of don't know how to be. I don't know how to. Um, what is that word? Match y'all's eloquence. Because I just am just Southern and aggressive and, you know, it can be a lot. Got it. Yeah. So um, I think we should stick with the deer analogy here. I think what you got to do is yeah, you got to go to I like the, the deer analogy. Yeah. So you got to go to the, you got to do it just like you're hunting for deer. You got to, uh, mm-hmm. you got to find a spot in the bar. You're going to sit there a while. You're going to scope out the woods, okay. you know. There's going to be some bucks okay. that come in that you're going to have to pass on. You know, you're like, hey, I don't know if mm-hmm. I'm not a big enough body and not not a big enough rack on them, <laughs> you know, and uh, you're going to let them pass on through the woods. But you still got to stay vigilant in there. And then you're going to see right. you're going to see your 30 point buck walk into the walk into the woods and you're going to have one shot right. at this. Now, if you come, if you oh, if you move too fast, you're going to scare them off. But if you don't move quickly enough, he's going to get away. So I think that right. uh, that's maybe the best way to approach it. What would you think, Charlie? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm i curious when you because you say you have a big personality. So when you walk up to a Midwest yeah. guy that you like, what what are you saying to him that that you're thinking might scare him off? I, I think it's just I think it's just that I'm I'm very direct. 
I'm very straightforward. I'm very, you know, hey, how are you? My name is Sarah. And then I'm just kind of like, I go into it very quick. And it's like, well, what do you do? Okay, this is what I do. And I get deep very quick. Yeah. What's um, a deep it's very question? Difficult for, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I, I, I was like, oh, I work with kids with autism and dogs, and this is why I love it. And then I'll just kind of like spiral into this deep reason for why I like things. Yes. And I just okay. think it's overwhelming. <laughs> Yeah, that, I mean, you're you're stressing me out a little bit with that. So I can imagine yeah. how they feel with that. So what I want you to do is I want you to wait till you get on the first date to start diving okay. into the deep reasons of why you are who you are. What you're going to want to do okay. is, is you're going to want to make sure that you're just cracking some jokes, especially if okay. if they're uh, maybe try out some dad jokes on some Midwest fellas. They're going to like that, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, if y'all can tell me your best dad jokes, I'll use them. Oh, jeez. So, uh, <sighs> I mean, I got a go bunch for of it. Play. You go. You take. Maybe you take you're at the, the grocery one. store. Come on, Miles. Yeah, maybe you're <laughs> at the grocery store. You meet him, and I did this in one of my videos. I think it can work. And uh, you're in okay. the lettuce section, and you ask the guy, "Hey, you want to help me uh, pick out a head of lettuce? Because I think." Two heads are better than one. Right? <laughs> and then you're going to want to pick up two heads of lettuce. There. That's a real knee slapper right there. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh, my goodness. I could do that. Yeah, I could do that. There are uh, dad joke books out there that yes. you can you can okay. find one of them. Now, I, I do have um, when, when you're uh, are you finding that the uh, Midwest fellows are not asking you out at all? Does it have the, have you been yes. asked out by a Midwest guy yet? I have not, no. And I'm kind of wondering if it's because of my personality. It's not your personality. Yeah, no. they, they're just, they are going to ask you out, but they're going to ask you out in a different it's way. Not gonna, it's not going to sound okay. like this. It's not going to be like, hey, you want to go out sometime? It's not going to sound it's like gonna that. It's going to sound something more like, hey, uh, do you want to uh, come over and check out uh, my shingling? And then uh, we'll take you over to the supper club, maybe if you're feeling it. But if you don't want to, no yeah. worries well, at gonna all. they're going to be like, uh, you know, I I got 40 acres of land that I uh, farm and this and that. And then that's when you're like, oh, I would love to see that sometime, you know. And he's like, yeah, well, maybe, maybe. Uh, and then you, then you, you got to slowly get into it, you know, because what they're thinking is you don't actually that they're being overly polite, thinking you don't actually want to uh, hang out with them. So they're going to give you outs. They're going to give you so many exit uh, ramps along the way. But those are not saying that. The more exit ramps they give you, the more they like you. Yes. You know, because they're, t yeah, okay. no pressure, you know, or nothing. But, uh, you know, okay. if you do want to And see, go that's a culture shock for me because Southern men don't do that. So, yeah. like, just because, you know, they are so direct. And so with stuff like that, like, I, like I'm like, oh, like, maybe they don't want me to come. So I just kind of won't. And, like, and I'll just, like, leave them alone. No. You know what I mean? You don't want to impose. Yeah. Well, yeah. she's used to if a guy wants to go on a date, they tell him that. Yeah. Midwest guys, they're not going to tell you anything that they want. You're just going to have to kind of hang around long enough until they are like, all right, let's do it. Let's go yeah. on a date. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that helps. Does it? <laughs> Does it? I feel like Charlie and I are just grasping onto anything we can think of here. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I well, think we gave you some insight, though. Honestly, if you can slam a beer with them, too, they're going to love that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. So I just learned my last name means brewer of ale, brewer of beer, and I love beer. So I'm a huge beer drinker. Oh, my God. That's I mean, I how love you lead beer, in. I love dating. I love, you know, dogs, and I work with kids, and so I'm all about it. You yeah. are just a straight-up Midwest catch here. Oh, God. <laughs> so... Yeah, honestly, I feel like one. Lead with the beer thing. You can maybe be like, "Hey, okay, let's have a beer," and then you just slam it, and he's going to be like, "Holy shit, what do we got going on here?" You know, yeah, his, gonna, I, his I, ears are going to perk up a little bit. Voice. I yeah. love beer. Yeah, maybe uh, okay. let's uh, let's lead with with actions instead of the voice. You know, you just lead in with just slamming a beer, that, and that's yeah. a great conversation starter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, slam a beer right. and instead, just, of, instead of the, the southern accent lead with beer <laughs> <laughs> well you get up you slam a beer he's probably that may disarm him enough to be like oh okay cripes. Yeah. let's go see a movie have you seen the new top gun <laughs> 
No, I haven't, but I want to. You want to know how it ends? Miles told me how it ended. Oh, tell her, Charlie. Yesterday. Yeah, and you can. Uh, you can tell me. No, no, no. He spoiled it once. He spoiled it once, and then you don't. <laughs> You don't want to spoil again. He spoiled it for me. I still haven't seen it yet, but um, oh. well, what okay. Do you well, think? hey, I've got to get back to work. <laughs> uh, but, I, but thank yeah. y'all. No, um, thank you. Out, but I got to get back to my kiddos. Okay, okay, tell your kids we says hi. Okay. All right. Thank y'all. All All right. Bye bye. Yeah, you could tell that. I mean, that call is exactly how Midwest guys are, right? You just keep yeah, talking around coy. the topic instead of just giving direct advice. Yeah, it's like, you know, we don't have to, but I was thinking maybe if you wanted to, we yeah. could go out. But honestly, if you're busy, no big deal. Yeah, I think you know? that that's what she's talking about. Yeah, right? it is. Yeah. It is. They're, they're, but the I do think it's a thing. The more a Midwest guy likes you, the more outs he's going to give you to not have to hang out with him. Yes. Know? Yeah, it's it's a very backwards type of thing. Yeah. Also, you notice that she's from the South and how quickly that conversation ended. Everyone else we talked to on the Midwest yeah. is like, well, yeah, I suppose I better get going. I and, know. Uh, I, yeah. I feel like I offended her. I know, but I know? don't think that was the case. No. I think she's just, yeah, very direct. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I mean, it's refreshing. I wow. would never do it to anyone. No, I was. Yeah, I yeah. would be shocking to do that. Yeah. All right. All right. Good deal. Who are we talking to now? We're talking to Colin. Colin, do you have Colin. Verizon? Can I ask? Do you have Verizon? I do not. No. Is that a problem? Well, no, it's fine. It's just that they're... Uh, you know what? I shouldn't talk smack about them. Maybe it's possible that there'll be a sponsor one day. Um. Anyway, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right. Are you? Where are you at? What you hauling? I'm from uh, the greatest city in the world. I, I want you guys to guess. Oh, the greatest city in the world? Manitowoc, Wisconsin. If you say Cleveland, we will hang up the phone. No, nobody, nobody likes Cleveland. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. No, don't say that. <laughs> I wanted to make oh, sure that on, that's what... Oh, come on, be real here. Uh, where are you from? I guess Manitowoc uh, or M Milwaukee. Those are my two guesses. Chicago. Oh, Chicago, Chi Town. I was just there over the weekend. I was just there. Oh yeah. What do you think of it? Well, I've been there many a times. I play in Chicago a lot. I like Chicago. That's I got a brag. Uh, well, that's, that's not bragging. Everybody plays in Chicago if you're um, doing comedy. Well, why yeah, don't you build comedy town? Yeah. That's where Second City is. And why don't you belly up to the bar yeah, and tell us what's on your bar. mind? Uh, okay. Uh, I'm not really asking for advice, but I gotta. I just wanted to say this to you guys, maybe give you some advice. But uh, have you been watching the Little League World Series? Uh, it's Actually, on it's on right now. right now. Yeah, we're yeah. both half watching to uh, uh, listening to you. It's electric. <laughs> I've never been so interested in baseball in my entire life. The way you just said that made me feel like you're like half an edible in just watching the Little League World Series. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I would agree that Little League is better than regular baseball. Last night on another podcast, You Bet Your Radio, you can find it where all podcasts are found. Cripes Cast, also a um, great podcast. You, we talked about that baseball is kind of lame and we wish it wasn't. And I think Little League fills a lot of those gaps for that. Yeah, it does. Look at this. You're right. We're, are we watching the same thing? Are you, are you watching, watching Mexico? Mexico versus the? I can't read that. Is that the? Oh, where yeah. are my glasses at? Oh, I got my sunglasses. Is it? What is it? Mexico versus cheese? Yeah. Paris? Let's, hey, well, let's just. Lie. Oh, now they're <laughs> polarized, so I can't see it because it blocks it out. It's nothing. Ooh, liner to shortstop out for out number one, top of the fifth inning. How many oh, innings are Little League? Seven. You're six. You're ahead of me. What? We're ahead of you? Just, hey, uh, we're just going to yeah, spend I'm, the rest I'm, of the game spoiling it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait till you get to the top of the fifth. All right. Asia Pacific is just running. Uh, All right. Guy is up to bat. Yeah. He's got one of the cool helmets that protects his jaw. He makes contact in his deep right field going, going, <laughs> gone. Stop it. Actually, he did make contact. Center field a little. Oh, oh, oops. Error. Uh, error. error. Safe. Safe, and the dude dropped the ball. You know these kids got to get their act together if they want to make it to the pros. Yeah, I'm not seeing any talent that can make but it that's, to the big that's leagues. That's what makes it exciting. Yeah, that that's is because it's it kind of like how we would play baseball. Yeah, it's like almost like MLBs. Exactly. They're too good at like defense and stuff, where yeah. there's a lot more errors and yeah. jumbled balls. 
all that. Yeah, yeah me, me and a couple of friends are thinking next year, get a car, drive, drive down to Williamsport and just, just tailgate the Little League World Series. Hell for a week. yeah. Williamsport, is it there every year? Is it? Yeah. Do I not? Oh, don't say yeah. Like, yeah. can you believe this asshole? He doesn't know that it's in Williamsport. Is that how you just said it? I mean, it's a it's a national okay. treasure. All Come right. on. All right. So, <laughs> remind me of what you said. Gonna end soon. <laughs> Chen Yu Ting is gonna steal uh, second. That's how it, it's it, a special runner. That's how he's gonna steal second. I think. Um, are is this phone call gonna end because you're gonna end it because you're sick of talking to us or what? Well, hold on. What? Are you at work? What's going on? Yeah, what the hell is going on? You're just no, it's no. a Tuesday. I'm, I'm a student. Ah, swing and a miss. <laughs> Sorry, uh, what'd you say? I'm on summer break. You're on summer. Student. How old are you? Summer break. Yeah. How old are you? You don't, have, you don't have a job on summer break. Oh, I do, but I mean, I'm well, off right now. What's your job? I work at a pizza place. Atta boy. You good at spinning the pizza or no? Yeah, you a hand toss guy or yeah. No, no, no. I'm I'm the phone guy. Oh. I, mean, I work on excellent well, customer service. I was gonna say you you have just uh, a great demeanor on the phone. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. You've got a you've got a what freaking pizza do you want to add it to? You yeah, called us. Exactly you called saying. us and you gave us yeah. that what freaking pizza do you want to add? You don't like, know where the pizza joint is? Yeah, Are you kidding me? It's it's an American institution. You like don't the know Little League the, Hall yeah, of Fame. You don't know that the Little League World Series is in the same city every year? Yeah. Well, it's just who I am, you know? Yeah. yeah. Is that who you are? Do you like working at the pizza joint? Absolutely not. No. See, the issue is the, the, you know, pizzas are fine. It's the people who have to order the pizzas <laughs> and then eat them. <laughs> what, okay. I don't think you should be the okay. customer service guy. No, this is a good question, though. This <laughs> is Either that or he was a pleasant customer service guy and customer service had just beaten him down <laughs> over the years. No, but this is this is good because you are you seem like a nice, straight-shooting fella, and I think that the, the customer's calling in. Uh, to your pizza place, I have worn you down. And so I think we should do a PSA, uh, a bellied up PSA. What are the things not to do when you call in to order your late night pie? Okay. Number one, uh, know what you're ordering, please. Know what you're ordering. Don't call in and be know like, what you're uh, okay. Well, first you. of all, yes. Pizza hasn't been around that long, and there's a lot of different variations. There's not even like a standardized, this is what everyone gets with pizza. So how am I supposed to know that? Oh, Miles is your worst caller. You, you can tell. Miles yeah. is one of those guys that calls in and goes, yeah, so uh, what's good there? You know? <laughs> well, should we do a mock call? Yeah, let's do a mock All call. Right. Okay, Miles is calling in late night. Ring, and, ring. And no, let, I'm not doing anything, so let me be the okay, ringer. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Ring. Yeah, I'll just... I'll, Okay. Bring. Hi, this is Domino's. Wait, what? Oh, I'm the ringer. So uh, I'll stop ringing as soon as you pick the up. Ringer, okay. L- let's try it again. Okay. I, okay. Bring. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Bring. Bring. Hi, this is Domino's. How can I help you? Hi, who am I talking to? I'm looking for some pizza. Okay, you're talking to Colin. Um, Colin. Yeah, we sell pizza. We're Domino's. Cool. Oh, this is Domino's. I thought I was calling Papa John's. Do you guys have that garlic sauce like Papa John's? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that sounds pretty good. What, uh, you know, I thought I was calling Papa John's. So I don't really know what your guys' menu is. What, uh, what do you guys got that's good? You have, any, you have pizza? Miles, well, do they have the garlic sauce yeah, we, or no? Yeah, they got garlic sauce, but I accidentally called Domino's, Charlie. Oh, what do you want sucks. from Domino's, Charlie? Actually, it's okay. They they got the cinnamon bread over there. Do you uh, have any cinnamon bread? Sir, uh, our menu is on our website. Why don't you take a look at it and then go back? Charlie, he told me to fuck off. What? Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, he tried to defer me to the give robot. Me, give me the phone. Hello. Uh, here's, my, the- here's my buddy, Charlie. Hey, uh, hello, sir. I'm sorry about that. Miles is a little drunk. Uh, we would just like a pizza. Is, is this Papa John's? No, this is Domino's. Oh, Domino's. Okay. Does Domino's? Yes. No, Domino's is okay. It's ask them. No. <laughs> what should I ask? What should I ask? Come on. He's gonna hang up. Have the garlic sauce. Do you have the garlic sauce? 
sir. Okay. So we'll do a uh, big pie, one of your big ones. Um, no, we want pizza, okay. Pie. Okay. Sorry, I, I meant pizza. I don't want to. I don't know if you guys serve pie, but I meant pie. That's what some people call pizza. But so we'll get that. Okay. okay? And then pepperoni. I think okay. on half of it. And then, um, and then the other half. Let's do veggie because I'm trying to w- watch my triglycerides. And uh, so half veggie, half uh, pepperoni. Does that sound good? And, and what? What veggies? Would you like what veggies, uh, Miles? What veggies do you want? You're getting a veggie pizza. Well, I it's better for my heart. My doctor t- told me. Um, so we're not gonna do a veggie pizza. <laughs> no, Miles. It, what am I supposed to eat? <laughs> I'm hungry too. Well, you can have some of the garlic sauce. You guys have garlic sauce, right? We got a salad. Oh, you're oh. good to eat a salad. Yes, salad we do have sauce. the garlic sauce. Can you yeah. put the salad veg? Can, give me the. Can you put the salad vegetables uh, on the pizza? Is that possible? Because otherwise, no one's going to eat the salad, and it's just going to go to waste. Do you have a salad pizza? I, I can do it for you. you know, oh, I don't, we don't really sweet. have that, but I'll do oh. it for you. Thank you. What's your name? Yeah, of course. Your name's, name's Colin. 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 I'm sorry. I wasn't on the phone yeah, initially. Colin. Colin, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Do you guys have cinnamon sticks, too? Oh, yes. Okay. Pizza, pizza. Thank you. Boom! There you go. You defuse that situation. I think you're. I think you're not giving yourself enough credit. Yeah, you're a pro, man. Chase, you're a pro. I don't know. Thank you. I appreciate it, but yeah. you know the job is uh, a little rough. The uh, calling to your friend about what they want on the phone is a classic. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, don't yeah. do that. PSA. Well, it's going to happen. I don't think we can just change human behavior. It's been millions of years. So Yeah. And what else can what else should people Literally avoid? back in the caves, they were literally like they were cooking something over the fire and they'd be like, "You want rabbit or do you want squirrel?" <laughs> <laughs> They've been doing that forever. Wait. And they would echo because they're in a cave. Be like, you want rabbit, rabbit, rabbit? You want squirrel? Which one's the rabbit again? <laughs> do you have the... Do you, do you, <laughs> do you have the stew? Stew, stew, yeah. stew. <laughs> That's yeah. funny, the cave. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll do a uh, squirrel with, with garlic sauce. Garlic, garlic sauce, 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 sauce. sauce. What's garlic sauce? sauce, sauce, sauce. <laughs> it hasn't been invented yet. Choo, yeah, choo, yeah, choo, yeah. choo, choo. <laughs> Hopefully someday we can just call someone and they can bring us food, food, food. food. It might be like this echo, echo, <laughs> echo, echo. Imagine if this was a really long cave, babe, babe, and we could order it from the other side of the world. Oh, there, oh, there. Let's All tie right. a can to a string. Oh <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is so far off the rails. You All have right. you have a yeah, World have Series to watch. Yeah. What are the boys drinking? <laughs> Honestly, we haven't drank that much. This is just our. Oh, insanity. the game's over. Game's over. We Who missed won? the end of the game. No, it was the bottom of the f- top of the fifth last we went there, dude. No, All we right. didn't miss the game. Well, yeah, you know what they did? They just switched. They just switched games. That's oh, halfway sh- through. It's that's unbelievable. Bum skillet. Well, ah. um, Colin, maybe Colin. we'll call into your Domino's and ah, uh, order a pizza. That's a sometime. good time. I'm hungry for pizza, so yeah, I'm calling, Colin. <laughs> I'm calling, Colin. <laughs> calling, Colin for some pizza. That's a very good song. That's a great song. As someone who is an artist and songwriter, oh, I did don't you know. know that Miles is a songwriter, Colin? Did can you, know? he, can he, you show me? He's like DJ. Right now he's like. Phone? Yeah, show him the yeah. He's only a writer. He's just he's the yeah, uh, he's right. He's the oh, Bernie. Oh, he doesn't actually sing. Okay. No, he's like Bernie Taupin, yeah, or Taupin, Elton John's writer. All right, Robert well, Hunter, we, Jerry Garcia. I'm getting writer. hungry because of all the pizza talk. So maybe I'll call into Domino's and order something after this. See you, Colin. Okay. Nice, nice. Appreciate you calling good. in, yeah, man. Keep doing the good work. Yeah, the Lord's work at Domino's. We'll see you soon. <laughs> yeah, you too. All right, watch keep for Keep going up. Yeah, so, yeah, we will. We'll keep bellying up. Tip your bartender. Bye bye. He's got it. <laughs> uh, that was. Fun, I mean, man. I, literally, we had a good time with Colin. Literally, that's how it goes every time I order pizza with a group of people. Yeah. What do you want? I know. I know. Wait. Get, can I put? It? And then it's clear when it's like, will you stop? Just went on mute. Yeah. You know. Well, that, that, those are the nice people. Yeah. Yeah. When was the last time you ordered a late night drunk pizza, Charles? Um, and have you ever ordered a pizza and passed out before it got there? Oh yeah, yeah. 
I mean, you know, it's tough. I I was in Nashville actually doing it. That was the last time. I was in Opryland. Have you ever been to Opryland? I have. I've been to the Grand Ole Opry before. Have you been in Opryland, though? The hotel that's like Opryland? I don't know if I've been in the hotel. No. It is... I've I can one up yeah, I was in the backstage at the Grand Ole Opry. Backstage at the Grand Ole Opry. Guess what, Miles? It's really fucking cool. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it was, I, it was I, once in a lifetime. <laughs> trying, that probably trying. will happen three or four times, you know. <sighs> one day. One day I'll be as cool as you. All right, let's we'll see another call. Well, guys, it's been a long time, but football is back. It is all the way back, and the NFL is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving you a can't-miss offer for week two. This week, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just 5 bucks on any NFL game. DraftKings is hooking everyone up. Game day greatness. All customers can take advantage of two new offers every single game day this September. You got to check the app and see what you can get. Download now and use code bellied up to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting five bucks. Again, that's code bellied up only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See cdkng.co slash football for eligibility. Terms and responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who are we chit chatting with today? Hi, my name's Megan. Hey, Megan, how are you? I am awesome. How are you guys? Good. Where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Okay, Lancaster, PA. Is that? Does that look like Lancaster? Yes, it does. If you're from out of town, most people do say it Lancaster. Okay, but it's Lancaster. Yes. You gotta get that Lank in. The it. old Lankeister. The old you know? Lankeister. <laughs> Going ass over Lankeister. Yeah. Miles, do you ever does that, someone ever tell you their name and then you forget it immediately because you're trying Megan. to pronounce Lancaster? Yeah. Okay, Megan. Sorry, Megan. Cheese Louise. This mind. <laughs> Megan from Lankeister. Why don't you belly up to the bar with us? Tell us what's on your mind. Awesome. Will do. Um, so it's actually like a weird thing today. Um, I'm calling in because I have this problem. Yes. Basically, one of my best friends is a guy. um, And we hang out all the time. And he's like one of my favorite people in the entire world. Okay. But the thing is, he's also my cousin. So we have been (laughs) friends for years. We went through a stage where people were like, they're dating. Oof. And then we told everyone, like, no, we're cousins. We're not dating. Uh-huh. <laughs> but we literally go everywhere together and hang out all the time. And now people are saying, oh, they're related, but are you dating? <laughs> so the question is, how do I keep my best guy friend, but also get out of this, like, crazy situation? Okay. 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 Well, yeah. Uh, you want to jump un- in first? <laughs> lot to unpack. There is a lot to unpack. Um, Does he think you're dating? <laughs> no. You paused way that too was, long, Megan. That was not the that, and that was not the delay on the phone either. No. I think she paused. No. Megan, does he t- does he does he for sure not think you're date? Does he for sure not think you're dating? He 100% does not think we're okay, dating. Okay, he says okay. if we see each other at family reunion, that's too close. And he also says something about he doesn't want to have children with webbed feet. He doesn't. Okay. Would you got. What was the last thing he, he doesn't said? want to have children with webbed feet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is, I mean, really up there with why you don't want to date your cousin. I just, I'll put that out there. Megan, um, how long have you been seeing your cousin for? We've been friends probably for the last, like, maybe eight years. So so you can see our problem with this, Megan. Okay, so hold on. He's been your cousin your whole life. Yeah, that's that's where I was going. And now you're just friends in the last eight years? What what happened before that? 
Well, we like didn't know each other. He's like my second cousin, like, oh. like it's the second or third cousin. Oh, so now we went from being first cousin to, to second or third, which means went legally from, went first cousins to kissing cousins. Yeah, oh, I'm seeing God. these. No. I'm seeing these webs dissipate now as yeah. the bloodline gets farther and farther away. <laughs> so what? You got one web toe. That's not that big no. of a deal. Helps you <laughs> swim better. Yeah. And just ask any frog. Yeah. You know, frogs, frogs, cousins, you know, fornicate all the time. That's why they're such great swimmers. Yeah. It's not a it's such a bad thing. Yeah. So, Megan. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Miles. Well, I was going to say, what what do you why do you think everyone else thinks that you guys are dating now? Not just like spending time together. Do like once in a while you guys like when you are departing from each other, you hold on to a hug for just a second too long. Is there things like that no. that are happening or I, what? I, I like never, we never hug. We don't hold hands. We don't like, <laughs> he is like my best guy friend. So at the very least, like he is really funny. So I laugh at everything he says okay. when he talks, like I'm paying attention to what he says. But aside from that, like, I literally don't do anything. Megan, when he talks to you, do you look him in the eyes? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Oh, man. No. Oh, what color are they? They're like a greenish blue. Oh, okay. Charlie, what color are my eyes? Oh, well, they're beautiful brown. <laughs> Okay, actually, that didn't help our cause. <laughs> um, no, well, Miles, you're different. Um, <laughs> Megan, let me ask you this. What's the name of your um, um, BF slash cuz? His name is Dan. Dan. So let's say in this world, let's say there's a world where you and Dan aren't um, fourth, fifth cousins once removed. Would you consider dating him? <laughs> Podcast, right? She didn't, she say, didn't no. say no. She oh did not my say God. no. Wow. Okay. So well. the answer is if he wasn't your cousin, would you consider dating him? Here's here's an answer. That's for not you. a no. Met, Megan. That's, hey, Megan, I want you I to tell guy that was, Megan, here's what I want you. This is how the, that should have gone. Charlie, ask it again. I'll be you. I'll be okay. Megan. You be Charlie. Megan, if Dan wasn't your cousin, would you date him? No. Okay, see? That's how that <laughs> should have gone, Megan. But now let's hear your explanation. I'm very curious. This is my explanation. So people always say that you should marry your best friend, all right? So if I found the guy that was just like Dan... But not Dan. I would marry him in a heartbeat. Oh, wow. You guys are going to have some web foot children. <laughs> I'm telling you this right now. Do you guys have one of those things going where it's like if you guys are both still single at 45, you're just going to get married and have web feet kids or what? Is that a deal you guys have? No. <laughs> Is Dan attractive? Absolutely not. Dan no. attractive? No. Uh, see, oh, wait. She see learn, how she went yeah. up with that? No. So he's not attractive. He okay. listens to his so, podcast yeah, Dan, and you're telling him he's... I hate to break it to you, but Megan thinks you're ugly. <laughs> is that your final answer, he's... Megan? He, okay. He is... I like can't say he's attractive. He's my cousin. Yeah, I know. Okay. Scale he'll one this. to ten. Just describe him and we'll determine if he's good looking. Yeah. Go ahead. Describe your uh, best friend, Dan. Okay. He has brown hair, <laughs> uh, bluish green eyes. He has a beard. Okay. What else? Uh, he's fairly athletic. Okay. Athletic cool. Okay. What else? <laughs> That's about it. How how are his calves? I I couldn't tell you. Okay. Yeah. Have you I'm seen sure. him with his shirt off? No. That's never. A lie. Never. You, you never no. at the lake with Dan. No, actually not. Okay, that's good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think All that right. was the appropriate way to describe your cousin. Yeah, yeah. that's very cousin. Okay. You're know? bringing it back here, Megan. Yeah, Megan. You're starting to learn a little bit. See, actually, <laughs> what we're doing here, Charlie, is we're training her how to answer questions to not let people on that, you know. That's really it, Megan. Like, neither Miles nor I actually think you're fornicating with your cousin Dan, 
But what we want to do is make it so other people don't think that. So we're trying to weed out the bad habits yes, with you right now. Exactly. So this dude, is perfect. Yeah. Okay. So here's the training. Charlie, ask the question about Dan again and okay. see. Does he have a nice package? <laughs> Megan, come on. Megan. That was like I do 20 not know seconds. The to that question. I did not think you were going to say that. <laughs> Well, I, I meant like... Now I'm kind of curious if he does. Yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes you can tell like if there's certain kinds of pants or something. <laughs> the pleats. The how the pleats pleated lay. Pleated yeah. pants. How do the... Yeah. Uh, what size are his hands? I don't know. Okay, okay Megan, we're going to... we're gonna. Sorry, that was a joke. We're going to bring this back to serious territory. So you have big socks. <laughs> Megan, um, no. how old are you guys? I am 23, almost 24, and he's 25. An older man. Okay. Wow. wow. Um, okay. And is he has he been romantical with anybody else in his life in the past eight yeah. years? Does he have a girlfriend? Yeah. How'd that make you feel? Not right now. It was fine because we're all, like we are always like we've been friends. Yeah. Now here's a question. This is a genuine question because I feel like this happens sometimes. Does uh, his past girlfriend seem to have any concern with how close you and Dan are? Well, we weren't as close when they were dating. Did you break up that relationship? Yeah, that was not very much info, Megan. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay. All right. What ended the relationship? Just parted ways or? Yeah, yeah. They just kind of parted ways. Okay. And then you got closer after that. Yeah, because I think it's a combination of like us both like being older and like most of the people in Pennsylvania in Lancaster get married by the time they're like twenty or twenty one. Oh, one so of like, those kinds. We're of kind. Times. That's why we like. That's why we hang out and we like go like we literally like we'll go to like different events together because we're the only single people left okay here i got a good solution for you You can maybe this this is part of your training so his name is no longer dan his name is now my my cousin not boyfriend dan so every time you address (laughs) him just go oh look who's here (laughs) my cousin not boyfriend dan is over there and then if you do that enough times i mean People have to think that you're not your boyfriend. You keep telling them they're not. Sounds a little guilty to me, Miles. <laughs> Sounds. A, I don't know if that's the best advice. Or just call him Cousin Dan. Cousin Dan. Yeah, that's Cousin- the other thing, Megan. That's what's tripping me up a little on this. And I'm sorry about the package line. I want to back it up and just apologize for that. Now put her in uh, forward and go. Um, you're talking about, you say we've been friends for eight years. You know, we've been friends. Like, you guys have been cousins and you're still cousins, and you're always cousin. If you said my cousin Dan all the time instead of like my friend, yeah. you know what? I, he, it's, it's the BF talk, the yeah. best friend talk, is what's getting well, you in trouble. Wait, hey. Here's the thing: is like we've been cousins like forever, <laughs> but like honestly, he has siblings that I don't even know. He's they're that like far like far removed cousins. If that makes sense. Okay. So I do like think of him more as a friend because I genuinely don't even know all his siblings' names. Got it. Okay. But I think you're going to have to put your politician hat on and just start calling him Cousin Dan. That's what it sounds yeah. like. <laughs> just to play devil's advocate, Megan, can you describe to me the family tree of how Dan relates to you? Oh can you walk us through that? So your parents and just walk me through Dan, Okay. Yeah, so let's see. His grandpa would be my like great great uncle. Oh, okay, shit. this really- is going to be complicated. Let's start. <laughs> let's start with who is related on your mom or dad's side. My mom's side. Okay, and this is your mom's cousin's kid. No. Yeah. Yes, I think so. But like, wait, the- no, it'd be like her. I forget. It's like off a generation or something. I don't know. I think you guys might be far enough apart. Yeah. You go ahead and go just, after it. Uh, are you seeing just anyone? Get, yeah, <laughs> just get after it. Megan, are you seeing anyone right now? No. I know. No. And part of me thinks if I just actually started dating someone, people would at least stop talking about me and Dan. Well, do you think how do you think Dan would That's feel? a that's a hell of a Tinder profile. 
Looking for someone to date so everyone <laughs> thinks I'm not dating my cousin Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, how do you think Dan would feel if you started dating someone else? He would be like, I think he would be like so hurt by it probably. <laughs> you have to go find other friends. <sighs> oh my God. Wow. I, I honestly, Megan, I, 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 I've never met. I haven't met you, but I've never talked to someone, two people so in love. You two just need to get rid of the cousin talk. You're so far away. Just. Yeah. You know, I mean, th- this is. I mean, I we, I can cut the sexual tension with a butter knife on I, this phone call between I, you and Dan. I, I can just feel it, Megan. Dang. This is not the solution I was looking for. This, <laughs> no. Well, you know Megan, what? The truth I, I th- hurts sometimes. Yeah, and honestly, Megan, I think you are looking for the solution. I just think you need two fellas sitting at a bar to tell you that it's going to be okay. And I think it is going to be okay <laughs> if, if you date your cousin. And honestly, <laughs> Miles stop, said... We got to stop calling Yeah, we got to stop saying cousin. Say uh, fourth cousin twice removed. And that's just a friend. <laughs> so call him friend. Don't call him cousin. And soon that friend might be... Lover, yeah, and then soon it might be husband, father of your child. No, okay, okay. Well, I, I mean, we were giving you the green light of I think that these far your great 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 grandpa's great great grandkid, uncle, something like that. I mean, I think your great 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 uncle would be proud <laughs> to know that <laughs> the, you ever the, watched, the you ever smile watch- in his cheese curds from X and I. Years ago, you ever watched Game of Thrones before? Yeah, it's totally cool. <laughs> it's called Keeping the Bloodline Pure. Yeah, and you guys have diluted it enough. Okay, <laughs> so start start bringing that purity back. You know? Uh, no, this this could never happen. Okay, <laughs> no, but but we're, Megan, we're joking. We're I'm joking. not oh, Miles. Man. I'm dead serious. Megan, <laughs> would it be the worst thing in the world? If you guys were together, probably. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think you have your answer. Um, that's the other thing about living in Lancaster is that like everybody's related to everybody. It's a big world, much. Megan. It's a and big every, old world. Everybody knows everybody's business. So maybe I should just move. Yeah. There's yeah. A, there's you a and lot Dan of- run away together. <laughs> Where do you guys want to go? Hey, Hawaii? Yes. Yeah, start fresh in Florida. No one will know that you're cousins. <laughs> <laughs> and there's so many cousins married in Florida. I mean, that's the capital of cousins marrying cousins. <laughs> that or Alabama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did we help you out today, Megan? <laughs> oh, not really at all, but. Are you, no, are you mad I, I at us? Are you mad at us? No. 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 And the best part is, is Dan's the one that told me to start listening to this podcast. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that sounds like Dan. If I know Dan like I think I do, he uh, would be I think cl- I- Hey, that's classic Dan. Have Dan give us a shout. Hey, Megan, quick question about Dan. Scale of one to ten, like if an average gal saw him on the street, what would they give him? Scale <laughs> one to ten. <laughs> Podcast. And we know. We we just, we, it's simple question, one to ten. Oh, I don't know. I feel like I shouldn't answer that question. You know okay. the answer. She's starting Megan. to learn, though. Uh, Miles, oh, stop. Sorry. I'm, uh, I'm the lawyer here. Just one or zero. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, do not answer that. Do not answer that. For the first here's, time on this podcast, here's the ever. Thing. go ahead. Maybe, maybe I could just find Dan a girlfriend. Then I could deal with the pain of losing a friend. And then it would be okay. That's the bravest thing I think you've said on this phone call, Megan. See, look how much you've grown on this call already. It's all because of you guys. You know what? That means a lot. That really does. Really puts into perspective for Charlie and I of why we do this podcast. Bringing cousins together, but also pushing them apart. That's what it's all about. (laughs) When you and Dan inevitably get married, can I be the guy who marries you? Can I officiate? If in any universe that would happen, a hundred percent. Okay. She said yes. She said yes. <laughs> no, I think to end the call on a real note here, I think you just got to start calling him Cousin Dan all the time. If you just call him Cousin Dan, yeah. hey, get Cousin Dan a beer. He's over here. Uh, hey, I'm going over to Cousin Dan's house. If you just keep that going, I think you'll start to lose a little bit of that stigma. Stop. 
I want to suggest one more thing before we let you go, Megan. There okay. are there. Okay. There are these things like 23 and me. Okay. Both of you get your DNA tested. Make sure that you're actually cousins. Cause if you're not, you could have the man of your dreams right in front of you. It's actually great. And that, <laughs> and 23 and me is not even a sponsor of this podcast. We're just telling you to do that. Yeah. And I, I mean, think about that. What if you guys, okay, Megan, do, let just role play with me here for a second. What say you both do the 23 and me. And as it turns out, you're not related at all. Like someone's, um, you know, the mom on the other side. Oh, it's a step kid, you know? Yeah. And not even the mom, like several generations back, like that mom, you know, and the mailman, you know, and so there's no bloodline at all to you in that scenario. Would you get together with Dan in a frisky kind of way? Nope. Okay. Good answer. Megan, she, look how much she you learned. passed. Yeah, it took us this long, but you officially. I think we're. Yep. Yep. I think you're ready to take on the world with yeah. Dan. Did you? I, did I you, feel like I am too. I feel empowered. Yeah, okay. that's exactly how you should feel. Listening to the Belly Up podcast, found where all podcasts can be found. Oh, you can sit there. Go ahead. Um, uh, Megan, when you said nope, did you believe that? Yes. Okay. 100%. All right. All right. She's ready. She is ready to she end this ready. call. She's, I also would like to throw out there that we. Uh, in no way, shape, or form, we are an anti-incest podcast. I just wanted to make everyone know that. I feel like I had to. It's it's true. It was getting a little incesty there, and yeah. I want to just come squash that. We are an anti-incest podcast. Yes, Charlie. Just had to throw that out yep, there. Yep, I agree with that. And and Megan, did I offend you at all in in my line of questioning? No, not at all. Oh. I think you guys are hilarious. Okay. All right. Well, if if I did or you're sleeping tonight and, you know, if something bothers you, I do apologize on that. But just roll over and tell Dan it's all going to be okay. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Megan. I had to. You were so much fun. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, you have to tell Cousin Dan to call in and tell him to say that it's Cousin Dan. And we'll, we'll get know. On the podcast. Yeah. yeah. If he says cousin Dan, okay. he's coming on hot. Yeah. Right? We're going to be uh, filming the next few days. So between now and next couple days, have him call in. Okay. Sounds good. We'll do. All right. Watch for deer and cousins. Yep. Tell, tell your folks. I says hi. Okay. Tell Dan. We says hi. Yep. Sounds good. good. Bye. Bye Megan. Uh, hey, what happened to you? What do you mean? <laughs> Usually, I'm the one being an absolute dipshit. I could, what happened? I could smell chum in the water. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to get to the truth. That uh, my journalist took over. Yeah, I, I like could that. tell there was some sexual tension going on I, there, yeah. and I just had to. I get didn't to want the to say it, but it. I had to. You know. Okay. Was that? Do you think I was aggressive? Do you think she was mad, upset with me? No, I think that you. I mean, at the start of the call, she was wishy washy, but by the end. No, 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 no. Deny, yeah. deny, deny. Right. We got her where we needed her to be. We cleaned it up. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. So Dan, you, you got to keep her. Explaining to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, before we get to this next call, Miles, we just keep adding people. We just keep adding people. We've got Will tune in. Uh, one half of the tune in to Dylan podcast. Okay, uh, Will, how you feeling? Oh, 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 yeah, oh, his mic's not working. Is it working? Oh, it's oh, yeah, working. No, Charlie, we got yeah, him. We got him. Classic we got him. bellied up yeah. prank. Classic move. Now, listen, uh, Will, uh, to start this off, and all of you, Miles, AJ, we are going to try. This is from uh, oh, Smugglers. This is some horseradish that we got here at Lenny's Tap that they gave us from. It's cold, so they gave it from their uh, horseradish cellar down there. Uh, and this is some... Uh, Royal Bohemian horseradish, okay, and and it's from Eagle River, okay. Smugglers up there in Eagle River. So, hey, can I have a pretzel? Oh, I thought I, you had one. Yeah, I'm, I'm going pretzelless here. I'm not putting my finger in there. I mean, I would if you guys weren't looking. But oh. all right, so everybody dip in there now. Horseradish, Wisconsin is famous for its horseradish. It's one of the main exports. We well, not the main export. But we're a big horseradish producer here. A, big, a lot of folks don't know this. Gonna kill me. And this stuff will just, it usually opens you up right on the inside of the nostrils. 
in the sinuses. So if you ever have trouble with that. All right. Cheers. So cheers. Is, it, is there a toast that you Initiation. do for horseradish? Or yeah. Not? Uh, if it's a radish. Oh, I smell it. Oh, my God. This is going to this is going to be fire. She, she's looking at me like you got way too much on there. <laughs> no, we're going to be it, fine. If we're it's be, a radish. If it's a radish, call her a horse. OK. <laughs> All right. Cheers. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh, it burned! Oh, it burned! <coughs> oh my gosh! Ow! Oh. Woo! Oh gee! I just wow. saw Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, my eyes are watering like crazy. Uh, uh, oh. Be cool. Be cool. Uh, be cool. Ooh. It's fine. Uh, I'm crying. I'm not crying. You're crying. Uh, no, no, I am crying. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tear. Oh. Oh, oh, my God. Shit. Who gave us that? Well. Yeah, smugglers can go. Uh, that was real. <laughs> well, why are you put why are you putting the cap on that? I'm that was good. That. I want right, a little more. Have some more. Have <laughs> some oh, more. God. Dude, wow. it just hit you in the face. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's not. Uh, yeah. Now my mouth's used to it. It'll yeah. go down easy now, right? That dude. You should always be suspicious of horseradish that comes in a little tincture <laughs> yeah. jar. I should have known right there. <laughs> I could tell by every Everybody. everyone else has been minding their own business for a while. It got quiet. And then it got quiet, <laughs> and I could see everyone's head turning watching. Wow. <laughs> oh, Holy that smoke. Is, that was, that was you know what? Actually, ridiculous. it felt good to cry. Yeah. I haven't got a good <laughs> cry in a while. You want some more? I'm not an overly emotional guy, so anything I can do to cry, it's good. <laughs> Fast forward 10 minutes, you're just bawling it, laying out all your emotional oh issues. I still feel <laughs> my yeah, dad just, was mean to me as yeah, a kid i'm crying but it's like miles i don't see you eat any more of that you're just crying now he's asking the call in for advice no <laughs> yeah he calls in <laughs> yeah Can i you thought miles was in the bathroom yeah <laughs> Um, no, Anne's gonna be like, wow, you cry for horseradish, but you don't cry for me. It's like the Midwest version of hot ones. Yeah, yeah I, kn I know. That would be fun to do a horseradish. I'm actually Last really dab. glad that I, you know, I picked up that it was gonna be hot. Yeah. But I'm glad I didn't know too far in advance because I think I would have psyched myself out. It was like know? smelling I salts. If I would have known mm. it, it would have been it that won. hot. I, I probably wouldn't eat it. You wouldn't know? Oh, no. man. Well, I don't think any of us would have. Yeah, we all did it at the I'm same like, time. I'm like, I've had horseradish before. Yeah, I had too. I mean, yeah, I was ready. The ladies over there like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised she warned you, you know? Uh, guys, uh, sure. what's, what before we hop on this call, tell uh, us, you feel, tell you us feel about, a little bad now, don't you? Yeah. That was not so. I'm good. I got this... Uh, Tippy cow, the tippy, tippy cow, cow yeah, rock mint, fantastic. It's Wisconsin, real Wisconsin milk in that. So. Really, yeah. All right, yeah. guys, tell us that about clip is gonna be funny. Yeah, that'll be a good clip. All of us instantly. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I was hurting. I was hurting. For yeah, like, that hit all like parts of the taste palette. I was about to hit the door. <laughs> <laughs> I was <about> to <laughs> I'm done. <All> right. <laughs> oh, there was man. a man spotted running from the bar. I think he was crying. <laughs> running people over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, running running a car over. <laughs> That's what you I should take some of this before the game. You yeah. should. You should. Every time we get like a goal line stand, I'm like, yo, just hand me the horse. Yeah. <laughs> give, give me, give me so the horse. comes out on their fingers, you just snort it, you know? <laughs> I'd run through a wall. I'd run through everybody with that. That might not be a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, Who needs I wonder if the league tests for this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 They're gonna start after this. <laughs> Holy They're like, smoke! Wait, he's taking horse tranquilizer? Or what? <laughs> yeah. Close. No, no, no. But worse, no, no. horse radish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we, do, we need to look into this foreign substance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, oh, Louise. Yeah, I mean, the smelling salts ain't got nothing on that. I don't think. No, my God. No. It does have the tingle on the back of the brain like they got, though. I tell you what. Yeah, I'm thinking, Are you guys feeling uh, that or I'm is just that just me? Sure. <laughs> Glad it's not just me. Hello. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who are we talking to today? Hey, this is Jake from South Dakota. Jake from South Dakota. How you doing, Jake? Oh, not too bad. Oh, Jake. good. 
Wait, oh, it's Jay. I'm actually out, out road hunting for ditch chickens right now, and uh, as soon as you guys answer the phone, there's five of them in the road in front well, of me. Of course the phone there down. is. Put the, the phone, phone down. We'll, get, listen. We'll, we'll listen. We'll listen. All right, hang on. All right, I need two more for a limit. (laughs) (laughs) All right, thanks for calling in. (laughs) Holy shit, did you actually nail him? He's yeah. still out there hunting. <laughs> He's pulling it up right, pulling now. It back right now. Is he a runner? Or did you hit him square? No, I got him. One <laughs> shot. We're good. All right. <laughs> we heard it. Yeah. yeah. That was. Can't, can't fake that. Did the rest of them fly okay. away? Or are they still waiting? Or are they still. Yeah, they, they got into the trees quick. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Anyways. <laughs> So you're not in Sioux Falls then, huh? <laughs> no, no. Where are you at? Where are you at hunting? Um, uh, East Central, about an hour and a half from Sioux Falls. Oh, sure. Okay. I was just out there. I was out over in uh, Howard, Madison area, kind of. A... Oh, I was. yeah, just I'm in... north, of, north of Howard, Madison, like 40 minutes. Okay. Nice. Real good. Well, uh, <laughs> so I mean, what are you going to do I, with that pheasant? Yeah, once gonna... you get your limit, why don't you belly up to the bar with us? Tell us what's on your mind. Yeah. So, first of all, I have a buy sell trade oh, that I'd great. like to get in. Is it a pheasant? Yeah, he's selling pheasant. <laughs> no, I don't think he wants this one. He's kind of close. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Nice, humble brag yeah. that he's a sharpshooter. You no, he that? said he was kind of close. So yeah, I think he, he you, blasted. He, the bird. he might be. A, he might be a little mangled. Yeah, for you he, we oh. blew them all apart. Yeah. He's not good eating, is what he's saying. Yeah. I am shooting a Mossberg though. Well, yeah, oh, there okay. he is, there Mossberg. You go. Well, straightest barrels in all the land. Of course, you nailed them. Absolutely. So, so what are you trying to sell or trade or buy? Yeah. So I'm actually looking to buy. <laughs> I'm just thinking okay. about you shooting that damn bird. <laughs> You're so casual. I love it. Yeah. So casual. Okay. What are you looking to buy? Yeah. I'm looking for, uh, it's going to have to be somebody from Iowa, I think. One of the the bush light, like the 56 can cases, like with the corn cans in them. Oh, yeah. The actual, the actual corn can case. Okay. If somebody finds me a full one of them that is full of 56 cans, I will pay two hundred dollars for it. Miles $200. has one. Two hundred dollars? No, it's not full. <laughs> they're gone now. <laughs> you didn't save one for posterity's sake. No, two hundred um, bucks for fifty six bushes. Just, just for the nostalgia factor. Yeah, I mean that's a. I mean that's two hundred dollars well spent, if you ask me. Yeah, why don't why don't right. you take a picture of yourself and uh, and <laughs> holding your your uh, your pheasant there. And then we'll put it up on the bellied up uh, t- Twitter and we'll say what you're looking for and how much you're willing to pay. Yeah. And well, uh, yeah, gotcha. In, in addition to this, in addition to this, you send it over to the Twitter page or the Instagram. We'll put it up there. Uh, that way it's official too. you know, 200 bucks. And then, you know, that way people uh, can uh, will give us your tag and we'll tag you. That way they can contact you direct. And we're going to get you those 50. What is it? 50, hey, look up. How many? I got to figure out oh, what my Twitter tag is. Oh, you okay. do Instagram, Instagram. Too. It doesn't that. matter. Just some way to contact you. So we're not giving. All right. Yeah. It's So Twitter, it's at all lowercase Jacob likes beer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how did you get that handle? That's, I feel like that's like a pretty common handle. I don't really know how I got that handle either. You'd think it would be taken, but. That's pretty all good. Right. I so like that. At Jacob likes beer, all lowercase. That's the guy yeah. to hit up. I, lo- I like how you're not like fully committed to the loves. You know, it's just like, I like it. I like beer. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, all right. Love well, is, a really, is a really strong word, but it probably could be love. Yeah. Yeah. But you're, I like it. We said earlier, you're such a nonchalant guy. There's no way you're going to profess your love. You just like it. So, so you're right. willing to buy right. that now for 200 bucks. Would you trade anything for it? You got anything that, that um, might be worth the trade? I have a pheasant now to trade, but 
Yeah. Some pheasant. You have, you but have, no, probably, oh. probably not. I would just buy it. And if somebody, if somebody still has the, the empty case, like just the cardboard, I'll buy that too, but probably for less. How much less? Um, that is to be determined. Okay. All right. We'll see the condition of the cardboard. I respect that. Right. Right. Whether it's been stapled to a garage wall or not yet and yeah. vice versa. Oh, well, this was, this was this a great was call. Unbelievable. Is, you got anything else you're looking for or you, even some you want to sell or anything else, trade, nothing before we um, uh, let you get back advice. We can do it all here. Uh, the only other thing is, is I would say maybe it doesn't have to be today, but I think sometime on the podcast, you guys need to need to sit down and really crunch out the the borders of the Midwest. You know what what is and isn't included in the in the Midwest geographically. Okay, well I I think because we... I, I feel like there's some other states you know that try to claim that they're that they're Midwestern and stuff, but they really just don't fit. What states? What states? Because we've had this well, conversation on this podcast before. So yeah, what do you think? What states in the Midwest do you think don't fit? Um, I could make a strong a strong argument that maybe m- the southern half of Missouri shouldn't really be included in the Midwest. Everybody, maybe most of Missouri. <laughs> Everybody likes to crap on Missouri. Yeah, well, I think it's retaliation well, from everyone crapping on t- Kansas for the other time. Remember? That's true. That's true. Okay, what else? Right, Do you have right. another state? Kansas. Well, I would say, like, Michigan is like a toss-up for me, you know? Like, Michigan is pretty far east compared to the majority of the country you know it's in the eastern half of so the country so what do you think about ohio but I feel, I, <laughs> ohio doesn't exist as far as i'm concerned oh my god <laughs> okay you cannot be giving away these states we need, michigan we've, oh, we've michigan this. has motown you want to give away motown see, to the see, east but coast we can, we can give away the eastern states and we could add a little bit to the western half you know like we could throw in like even a little bit of Wyoming and Montana in there, you know, the flat parts of those. I feel like they're probably a pretty Midwestern. A little bit of them. So now you're, you're. I mean, I'm pretty on board with that part. I mean, yeah. look, I'd be down to right. acquire. Sure. But I just, I'm not trying. You, you can't get rid of Michigan. I'm going to say it because Michigan, I mean, you know, like Ohio, sometimes you're like, it's like the uh, bratty stepchild once in a while, you know, like, okay. Right. Right. But the still redheaded family. stepchild that needs a beating once in a while. No, no, I didn't say that. You said that. I didn't <laughs> oh. say that. Okay. Um, but you know, we it's still family, you know? Yeah. Plus, we are already outnumbered by the whole rest of the country. We can't just be giving away parts of the Midwest. Yeah, we got I guarantee though there's there's more Mossbergs and more ammunition but in between these borders than the rest we, of the country. Are we now launching a war? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are we doing? I Let's keep know. the ammunition in the pheasants, okay? Yeah. The thing is, is we need to hold strong here because uh, look i i my sister is in uh detroit okay if we lose her she's never coming back for thanksgiving again okay yeah, you know if, now you're breaking up the baron's more family food for you right yeah <laughs> this this guy doesn't give, he doesn't He's give cutthroat. a shit yeah he yeah. is wow <laughs> wow well you know, i now get why you blasted that fact <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, he's not even out there to get some good eating mm. he's just doesn't give a shit yeah well look i, I on this podcast we're gonna hold that we need all the midwest states we'll we take a little bit of montana and wyoming too i'll yeah. take that Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. You know, and then like I assume all all of Nebraska and then we could even argue for for, you know, like some of Kansas I'd be OK with. And then like the flat part of Colorado, too, you know. But once you get into the mountains with all the hippies and stuff, then I think you got to cut it off but, but, but right up to Denver, <laughs> right up to the Denver airport and then no further. Yep, Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I you know I'm on, I'm on board with that. Okay. It was if, flat part of Colorado, flat part of Wyoming, flat part of Montana. Who goes to Colorado and says, I just want the flat part? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny part is, is I recently I went on my honeymoon in Colorado up in the mountains yeah. a couple months ago, and I enjoyed the flat part of the drive back much better. Well, you're a the Midwest dri- guy through yeah, and through. You really are. You really are. It's you're, easier driving. You're talking there. on the phone, shooting pheasant. I mean, yeah, you just sound like a Midwest guy through and through. You just, you just got to be a multitasker out here. Yeah. Yeah, you do. To, and, to survive. That's why me and Charlie never get any birds is because we're too busy talking. We're not busy. Uh, we can't multitask. So. Yeah. 
Can you right. le- yeah. by the way, can you legally shoot birds from uh from your car in South Dakota or is well, that just like a they look not, the other not way? Not from you the got, car, but you, you, get out but of you the can car. We did hear right, him get yeah, out of the car. Off. It did, I did get out of the car. Yeah. I yeah. had the door cracked open early. Yeah. We're just we're doing that to make sure. Yeah, just just to check our legal liability. Correct. On this you one. shot that pheasant out of your car. Correct. No, negatory. What? No, sorry. <laughs> you were out of your car. Are you when trying you to, shot... to incriminate me? No, no we're trying, trying to, to decriminate you. Just help us. us. Okay. Okay. You were not in your I was, car. I was outside. Yes. Good. That's what I meant Good. to say. Right. I didn't yeah. mean, mean to right. say that you shot it out of your car. <laughs> you know. Right. That you were out bad. of your car yeah. when you shot it. Yes. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was not a good question by me. I apologize for that one. <laughs> Didn't think that one all the way through. Well, listen, Jake, we I really hope, hope we can limit. get yeah, 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 we hope you get your limit. We hope you get your box of beer. I will. I'll also make sure to send in a picture to yeah. the uh, Twitter page. Do oh, that. Yeah. We will we'll we'll hook it up. We want only success stories here, okay? Gotcha. All right, man. All right. Well, thanks for calling in. Good luck hunting. Yeah, thanks. Have a good one, guys. You too. Bye-bye. You can't make that up? You can't. <laughs> oh, of course, when you guys call. I thought I he just, was, you know, I thought he was just doing it for like a bit. I thought he was too. And and no, I'm glad we pushed him. Although he could have just gotten out of his car and shot. Fired off a round? Yeah. Hey, I'm hey, like, hey. Comedically, it worked. I, I want to believe, I want to believe that he shot a pheasant. You want to believe yeah. Jake the Great. Yeah. <laughs> He was, was great, man. He was funny. That was unbelievable. I wish but. people would stop trying to get rid of states in the Midwest, though. What is the deal with that? I don't know. Just let's make... Do they s- not realize that we need some strength in numbers? We need to keep bringing in more. Yeah, people have been ignoring the Midwest for years. Why would we give them less to yeah. ignore? You know? That makes sense. Well, hopefully we can keep pushing that forward. Yeah, we got to hold the line. Hold, hold the, the line. line. Well, we got to push the line into Colorado, that, Wyoming. That's true. <laughs> he just wants the flat part of Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's classic. That's a South Dakota guy right there. I'm telling yeah. you, South Dakota guys like the flat land. They do. That's a, I was talking I mean, I to Taylor about land. that. I'm a big guy. I don't. I mean, I say this all the time on our other podcast. You bet your radio found where all podcasts can be found. Cripes cast um, is great too. Uh, I just, I'm a guy who's meant for flat ground. Okay. I, I coming from the, uh, we got flat and we got hills. You're in kind Wisconsin. of more of a, you're, you're from Milwaukee area. Yeah. I got, I got like, water you're, you're, there. You're I got a sea guy. Yeah. Yeah. You're I'm like, a sea man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just am. I like looking out at water. I like the hills. I like the trees. You know, that's just what I prefer. No, no judgment against people who don't. But he's one of the fellas who just, I guess, like you, likes that, that, that flat lane. And by the way, sunsets in uh, South Dakota. Holy Dakota. smokes. In North Dakota, too. In Iowa. Iowa. And Nebraska. And Nebraska. Some and, parts of Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> You're and, more in the Rust Belt, aren't you, though? Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm in, I'm in the... <laughs> Anyways, anyways, right. that was good. Hello, welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who are we talking to today? Hi, it's Carleen. Hey, Carleen. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How about you guys? Fantastic, honestly. Yeah, where are you calling from? Well, that's great. Um, I'm actually currently in Florida. I decided to do an impromptu trip down here for... <laughs> almost two months <laughs> oh, whoa whoa Good i want your you. job where do you work <laughs> i know well i'm a geologist i currently like live in north carolina but i put my house up for sale and my uncles had an extra house that they couldn't get out of a lease and they bought a home themselves Not and i was like brag. hey can i just come down and work from florida and they're like yeah come on down that's so awesome. Packed in two hours and drove the ten and a half hours. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. I I'm very curious. You said you are a geologist. I have no idea yeah. truly what that means. Can you explain to me what a geologist does? 
That's like explaining what an engineer does. I'm just kidding. And it's like a, you could have different specialties. <laughs> like roasting a structural them. geologist. Just roasting his ass. <laughs> well, what kind of geologists are you then? So I'm just an engineering geologist. So I work a lot with the dams and um, oh. water and mines wow. and earthquakes. Well, damn. You you work on some <laughs> some pretty cool stuff. What is your favorite Thank part you. of the dam? The favorite part of the dam, mm-hmm. I guess the the water it holds, or if you're talking about the structural, maybe the spillway. Yeah, I, I'm a big <laughs> spillway guy as well. I can concur with that. What about you, Charlie? What's your favorite part of the dam? My favorite part uh, of the dam is the little home on top of it that someone lives in and decides when the water cometh and yep. when the water goeth. Yep. I always wanted to live in a dam home. You know, I've been living in a dam apartment for too long. <laughs> 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 it's time for me to move on up. Okay. There you uh, go. Yeah, well, maybe you'd like the crest of the dam. Uh, yeah, how how do you feel as a uh, engineer of dams? How do you feel the beavers have been doing all these years? Well, they're hard workers. I mean, they do a lot of work to get their little homes going. Um, so but that I was basically like, oh, it's cute. Dam, so. You're like, it's that's cute what they do. But what I do is I get shit done. Have you ever seen Hoover Dam? It's huge. <laughs> it is. That is a monster. Damn. How do you feel? That is the monster. How do you feel about my take that I had on another podcast called You Bet Your Radio, where you can find where all podcasts can be found? I said that I don't really get all the hoopla with the Hoover Dam because basically it's just a bunch of concrete but vertical instead of laying flat. How do you feel about that? From a geological standpoint, how do you feel about that? <laughs> Man, I feel like we're going to get a lot of controversy on this topic, but I'm here for it. We um, love controversy. I think the wow factor, yeah, uh, all about it. Like the Hoover Dam is kind of cool because of the engineering techniques that went behind it. I mean, they didn't have a lot of tools and, you know, big equipment to build it. And you had people on ropes that literally were hanging from ropes and just like a piece of wood. Wow. And it's just kind of cool. You think of it in that point of well, view. Well, that definitely changed my perspective. I know. It's like I'm looking. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of concrete that's vertical that was built by people on swings. On now swings. Now it's completely changed. Yeah. yeah I now want to watch a documentary <laughs> on the making of the Hoover Dam. Yeah. How many people? People are buried in the Hoover Dam concrete. Oh, yeah, for sure. For yeah, sure. that's what we you're lost going with another awesome in the mixer. Was it built by the mob? <laughs> well, you guys. Um, so I was on the ropes team, and I actually like went down the Hoover Dam. And you know how much stuff people throw over that? I think I col- we collected as a whole like. Four hundred dollars worth of quarters one day. Real so time, time out. Those are people's wishes. Yeah, now they're not going to come true. Them all. Oh my god! How does it feel to be someone profiting <laughs> off of little hopes children's and hopes and dreams and wishes? <laughs> Well, they made my dreams true with all the beer I consumed that night. Uh, okay. You know how to pull the strings. And I yeah. bought for other people. Uh, Wait, yeah. now you have to back this back this damn boat up. So hold on. You've worked on Hoover Dam? Yeah, so um I was inspecting all the rock slides that are on either side of the dam. So the, you know the, I didn't the know they had rocks that can come down slides. on the visitor center. Like there's a, I haven't been there. There's a rock slide. You can slide down it. No, come on, Charlie. Rock falls. So we're just protecting your little noggins of all the. Oh, so there's no falling rock. Oh, so there's no falling rock. I'm not well, gonna lie. You're gonna have to talk to us like we're eight. She already is. I know. Did you okay. hear how you're she said? You're gonna want to no, talk to Charlie. us like we're five. She's like she's our basically our babysitter right now. Love it. <laughs> yeah, that sorry. We're gonna try and smarten up for you. Um wow. No, you guys are doing great. So yeah, how do you collect all those coins? Did you just pull them up or is there a little net there like on the yeah. golf course when they have a net on the bottom of the pond to bring up all the golf balls? How do you get all those quarters? Well when you're 
So we were on the abutment, so the rock face on either side of the dam, and like rocks are just in the crevices or like laying on top of the rock. So as you're rappelling down, you're just collecting them and putting <laughs> them in a pocket. I'm probably going to get in trouble for collecting everyone's coins. <laughs> that's because that's that's we not- call this the old backpedal, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're really rappelling out of this it. one. <laughs> Oh, that's how wow. she's gonna put kids through college. <laughs> was yeah, was right? yeah. <laughs> well, the only way you can get uh, the only way you can absolve yourself from stealing all these people's wishes is by donating that money to Make a Wish. Yeah. So and if you don't, you're okay. a terrible person. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna live with that now. Okay. Yeah. I'll- all right. Yep. Thank you. I have that. I have a heavy heart now. I'm going to have to pay that back. <laughs> well, uh, heavy hearts just make you stronger. Uh, all right. Them around all Charlie, day. I think we I think we've asked our question. Yes. She called in. She was looking for some advice. Oh, potentially. Yeah. I forgot. About Why don't that you part. belly up to the bar with your pocket full of quarters and tell us what's on your mind. <laughs> Beers are on you. What's going on? That's totally fine. I'll buy beers all night. Um, so I need advice. And this is also going to help my sister-in-law. Okay. Um, so anytime I'm home and, you know, you're around family and, of course, the parents. Yep. So I'm single. And I've, for the last 17 years, have been giving crap about not, you know, giving grandbabies. Or, hey, Car, when are you going to have babies? How the heck do you stop people from asking that question? Do I need to make a shirt and walk around with it on? <laughs> what would the shirt like, what do we do? say? What does what? the shirt say? That's what I need. I, that's why I need advice. What uh, should I put on the shirt? It, or uh, it I just says a thousand uh, crying babies. It no. It just okay. says I only have sex for fun, not babies. That's what the shirts would say. <laughs> I'm I'm a but person, I mean, not a baby that. maker. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> There's no bun in the oven okay. ever. Yeah. There, yeah. See, and let the t-shirt do all the talking. That's what I need. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Yeah. It seems to be, honestly, did they give up on the marriage thing? Because it sounds like they skipped over. Yeah. A critical when you get married. Step. So now they're just have given up on the marriage thing. Unless you are, you know, she said she's single. Uh, yeah, they've given up on that part and they just have gone straight to, we don't even care how you do it. Just get us a baby or what? Yeah. Everyone just wants the grandbabies or whatever it is. And yeah, skipped over the marriage. It's not about my happiness. It's about probably just giving up these little twerks for them to babysit once in a while and give them back. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, is there a rent a kid type of situation you can find that just... They're looking, they sounds like they're just looking for a kid to hang out with. <laughs> well, so I'm the firstborn and my brother's eight years younger than me. So they got married two years ago. So I was like, oh, this is excellent. The pressure's off me. Now it's all on him and his wife. But they haven't really given up on me. But I was hoping that would like leave some slack. So, well, yeah, do you, I don't know. Do you want to have kids? I don't know. I'm I'm what you call, you know, it's probably geriatric eggs in there now. 37. Isn't that the scientific term? Really? Well, you're asking the <laughs> wrong really two want? fellas. You, we oh, have I, heard, no I don't idea. know who Jerry is. Yeah. If that's what you're asking. Me. My cousin's no name Jerry. He's a good guy. Yeah. You know, he's got a lot of theatrics. Jerry's theatrics. Is that what she said? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Maybe your 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 shirt just says, "I am. Am I not enough, Mom?" <laughs> oh, I like that. Who gives you more crap, <laughs> Mom or Dad? Um, it was Mom in the beginning, and it's been Dad as of late. I think he sees all his friends, and they're all Grandma and Grandpas, and yeah. so I think that you know, making them feel a little sad. Oh, okay. I have a dark you know? solution for you, which we'll maybe get to later. I, I'm not ready to reveal it yet. I'm still workshopping it. So, Charlie, I want to hear how you approach this with your family, because Charlie's in a very similar situation with you. No kids, single guy. 
you know, his family's always down his throat about something. Yeah. How do you avoid the kid talk at, at your gatherings? Well, here's what I do, honestly. Uh, it, basically, I just start talking a lot. <laughs> And when I start, the, the more I talk, the less they want me to procreate. <laughs> so so I, that's okay. my best advice there. Just start talking about all the wishes you've stolen from little children yeah. along the way. Yeah. Maybe throw in some questionable <laughs> takes on stuff, you know? Yeah. You maybe like, you know, I don't when Michael Jackson was dangling his kid out the thing, that didn't seem like that was that crazy. Just say stuff like that. And then they'll be like, OK, she should not have kids. Yeah. Or come up with a nice invention <laughs> for a kid. Like, you know, I've been noticing all these people with their dogs on choke collars you know <laughs> wouldn't that make <laughs> I mean, wouldn't it be easier to keep track of your kid if, <laughs> if, if they got choked a little every time they walked away <laughs> not a lot shock collars maybe shock, shock collars shock. suggest Whoa. shock collars for kids <laughs> you know how there's the electric fence outside what if they made electric fence play pen yeah uh, just suggest stuff like ooh. that yeah. absolutely and then they'll say oh, okay. you know what uh, maybe things are better this way. Honestly, this was kind of the direction that I was going with with my dark one. So I think we got there anyways. So. Well, what was your dark one? It was basically saying questionable stuff like that. OK, yeah, yeah. got it. Yeah. Well, you know, and also it's it's just your life. And, you know, we can't live our lives for other people. It's a people pleasing thing. And. It's just best to, you know, you keep doing you and saying you and it's going to be awkward and uncomfortable at first, but then eventually they'll understand. Well, OK, I've, I thought of another good one, so okay, by the way, as good. you were as you were rambling. I, um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like trying to give actual advice. <laughs> OK, so the last thing you said, even your dad started giving you crap. The last thing your parents want to know is details about how a baby is made or you were at least attempting to make a baby. So then you should just start diving in to how you're trying to. And in far too much detail, they're going to clam up and ask you to stop telling the details. And then they won't ask you anymore. That's another interesting. Well, one. But that. That is good, but my family, oh, we're so open. It's actually kind of bad. So I, I did do that route. Like, here's an example. I'll tell you a story. So my brother and I were coming home from the theaters, and it was dark. There's a full moon, and we're coming up the driveway. And he's like, oh, my God, did you just see that? And I'm like, no, what? He's like, I just saw Dad's ass. And I'm like, what? So they're they're the type of people they'll do it anywhere. Everyone's open, like not whoa, whoa, like, windows open. Ha- back so back that ass up. They were alone. Yeah, they were alone at home and decided, yeah, we're just going to take this outside. So they were they doing were in it. their room, obviously, because yeah, out on the porch. Okay, so <laughs> See, I guys- now get it. I mean, your whole family's fucking like bunnies. And so naturally, all they want is babies. You know, I think yeah. th- you. this is what happens. This is their counter tactic. They're like, well, if, if I'm not going to get kids from my children, we're just going to give it another go ourselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe. Well, but it. so my brother and I put a sign on the slider door that said no sexy on this point because oh everyone went to bed and in the morning. Yeah, I Mom's mean, having coffee and she turns bright red when I come down the stairs. I was like, so, how's your evening? Uh, She's like, I don't know, something about that full moon that your dad just loves. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> He's like a werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You guys saw yeah. two full moons that night. Yeah. It's like you're on Absolutely. another planet with multiple moons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Star Trek. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, it doesn't sound like the T-shirts are going to help you any anyways. Yeah. Now that I know more about your family. Right? Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do with that even. Yeah, I, I mean, mean. Your 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 parents are exhibitionists, it sounds like. Yeah, you just turn it on them. Yeah. Say, I was going to have kids, but I'm still trying to get over a traumatic episode of seeing your ass. <laughs> 
What, now, when you know that might work, maybe. Well, maybe when when you guys not to get into more detail on this, but you're walking home and you're looking up at the porch. Did you see it too? Did just he see it? Was just an you ass, or was it, the it. was the ass like doing something? It was just my my <laughs> my brother just saw them run because you know the moon was lighting up the backyard and just saw them <laughs> running from the back porch. Mom going in first and dad behind, so he saw dad. Oh, that, so they weren't actually saw. caught so in the act. Yeah, running bare ass naked. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, that's a hard thing to. I mean, see. your family is unbelievable. So, what do you? I mean, I can't imagine what you talk about at holidays. It's got to be like. Oh, it's oh, insane! It, it's, it's probably it's like crazy. a. It's probably like a. You guys come into the where like you're gonna open like Christmas presents or something, and if you celebrate that, and like you go to sit on a couch, and your dad just goes, "I don't think I'd sit on that one yet. Still, <laughs> still got to be cleaned." Yeah. Is that how it goes? <laughs> so then everyone's got to sit on the floor. I mean, pretty much. Oh my god! Yeah, pretty much. Otherwise, it's pretty. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's just we're very like. You know, it's a open, like, we're just very honest with each other. We try to make each other feel uncomfortable. So I think that's why it got to that point of just talking real honest. And then now it's like, well, how do I break of the things that, like, the baby is talking? Like, hey, I don't want to hear anymore. I've had, like, sit-down talks, but. Oh, you've told them. It is you've what had it is. I don't live in the state anymore. You had sit-down yeah, talks. Yeah, we'll sit down. Telling them. Yeah. <laughs> well, um. <laughs> Are they coming to Florida anytime? Pun intended. <laughs> no, they, no they are not. Florida? They are. No, they're in Wisconsin. So like most of my family's in Wisconsin and I have a few sprinkled in Florida and, uh, but I'll be moving to California. So I won't be moving back to Wisconsin. So I, I'm, I'm at least, well, I love my family. I would love to live in Wisconsin again, but not a lot you know, of dams the up there. Just better what? Yeah. Better. Yeah. Yeah. What's Wisconsin <laughs> State Rock? Red Granite. Yeah. Red Granite. I was on another podcast. She definitely listened. She, she didn't know that off the top of her head. Yeah. She <laughs> she learned that geog geography from our podcast. Geology. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> well, you know. You're on it. You're on it. Let me just say this on behalf of the Bellied Up podcast. You are enough for us and we're proud of you. And your folks are too. Um, and they also. Kudos to your, your parents. They still got the spark going too, though. Yeah. Good for them. Good for them. And you, you know, know what? That's what we say. That's what. Not embarrassed by it. I was like, hey, you're still showing love. Well, I maybe I would mean, be a little would embarrassed. It kept in your room. Well, yeah, keep it in your room. But hey, glad it's not like fighting or anything. Do they People do the. Way worse, do so. they do the classic? It's my house. I can do whatever I want. Oh, how many times I've heard that. Oh, God. Jeez. Yeah. I don't want to know <laughs> other. I mean, I, if this is just one story, it's not. I know it's not an isolated incident. No. I there's other stories that yeah. I can't even imagine. Hey, you know what I always says, though? There's no use in being embarrassed over a bare ass. <laughs> embarrassed. <laughs> Perfect. Love it. Great advice. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we helped, but we most certainly didn't help. But we learned a lot about the Hoover well, no, Dam. <laughs> I mean, the, the dam is damn, damn. Some knowledge, you know. It was some, uh, you know, verbal therapy. So maybe I just needed to talk about it out loud on your podcast. Yeah, you know <laughs> what? Hey, anytime you're feeling like uh, the cornered you again, asking about babies, call on in. We'll talk to you about it. Maybe less stories about your parents getting it on. Maybe less bare asses is what we'd like to talk about. I, but I'd like actually more of those stories. Okay, would you? Have your folks call. I want to talk to them. <laughs> yeah, tell your folks to call I in. I my folks call. I got a question for you before <laughs> no. you go. Okay, what, hit me. What did the fish say when it ran into a, a brick wall? Or a what a did the fish wall. say? Hang on, Miles. <laughs> I'm telling the joke. 
what did the fish say when it ran into a concrete wall? I, I believe it's damn. No, he said, who put a concrete wall in the middle of my living room? <laughs> that is oh, true. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> no, he said, well, actually, damn. Char- Charlie, I believe, unless my brother's yanking my chain, I think he roomed with one of your brothers in college. There's what's a good you, chance. What's, what's, There's 40 Barron's kids out whoa, there. Whoa, so. whoa, whoa. Where'd your brother go to college? <laughs> So he went to Winona and Lacrosse. My and he's twenty nine. Okay, I didn't have a brother that went to Winona or Lacrosse, but I did have a sister that oh. went to Lacrosse. He was rooming with your was sister. Was he Uh-oh. rooming with my sister? Uh oh. <laughs> what? How old is well, your? Maybe he met your brother then. How I old? Know. You said rooming. Oh no, Charlie! And he oh, comes no. from the family that likes doing it on the porch. Even oh, how does no. that make you feel, Charlie? <laughs> how old is your brother? And what's his address? 29. <laughs> He's twenty nine, so he would okay. be uh, he would be uh, Addie's age, and Addie is currently pregnant. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. Well, maybe my parents do have grandbabies. Oh, <laughs> no. Wouldn't that be a fucking twist? Oh, my oh, God. Oh, wow. I think you got a phone call to make after this call. Charlie. I know. I'm going to call. Well, <laughs> no, but I bet you. Here's what I bet you happened. <laughs> I bet you Addie's husband, the alleged father, Went to lacrosse too, so I bet you that maybe he roomed with my brother-in-law. Oh, there we go. So I ask him oh, if his maybe roommate, maybe his roommate is a felon named Brad. We quite literally have a game of telephone going on right yeah, now. Yeah. What's your brother's name? What's his address? Charlie's gonna show up to his thing to kick his ass, <laughs> but he's but it, as he's walking up, he's like, "Is everyone decent?" <laughs> he's got his head down with his hand over his eyes. <laughs> is everyone decent? <laughs> <laughs> that is protocol, apparently. So his name is Mitch or Mitchell. Mitch or Mitchell. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll do a little research yeah. on Mr. Mitchell. Yeah, we will. I'm going to do that right now, in yeah. fact. I'm going to call my sister. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, here we go. A three, four way call right here. Ten four ways now. Hello. Hey, Addie, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. So I was talking to someone on my Bellied Up podcast. I'm talking to him right now. You're on the podcast. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Yeah. No, you're not. You're not. No, you're, you're not. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, they said that they room with my brother at college at Winona or La Crosse, and I says, I don't have a brother that went there. But then I says, I do have a brother-in-law that went there. So my question for you is, do you know a fella... Do you know a fellow named Mitch that maybe roomed with uh, Brad? Yes, Mitch. Mitch. Is that his yeah. name? Well, oh, I'm, oh, I'm talking to his sister right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the phone right now. Um, um, now there. Uh, I don't. We don't do, really know how to uh, say yeah. this. <laughs> all right, that's all we wanted to know. That's Eddie. Brad's phone number. Yeah. Uh, so, Eddie, <laughs> do you see Mitch a lot these days, Eddie? I haven't seen him in a while, but I was at his wedding. Okay. And would you say like maybe like wait, six we to nine months ago? Oh wait, wait, wait! You were at the wedding. Wait. Wait. Do you know? Do you know his sister? Um, I've met her. Oh, well, she's but on the she phone. We met? Me. Oh, oh she, no. He, she, oh. As you said, Uh-oh. she probably doesn't remember me. She goes, we met. Oh. Um, <laughs> anyway. So when was the last time you saw Mitch? Maybe so like, si- like six to nine months ago you, you no, saw Mitch? No, Addie and Mitch. Did, did, no, that's not. That is. Is Miles stirring the pot? Miles is stirring the pot. How, so Why? I would never. The the family um really wants kids and i was saying um that like you didn't room with my brother did you room with my sister and then i was like oh then you know it's a whole thing so anyways 
<laughs> so are you guys implying that the paternity of my child belongs to bitch? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Six to nine months. <laughs> that was that was mild. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll let him know. Oh. <laughs> no, Mitch, is a, Mitch is a a very nice guy. Mitch is a very nice guy. Have you ever hung out with him on a porch before? So, Addy. Why? So Mitch Mitch was walking home <laughs> with his sister. <laughs> And they uh-huh. saw their dad's bare ass on the porch, and um, his dad has his dad fixed our fireplace. Oh, his dad fixed our <laughs> fireplace. Well, got a story. Uh, I mean, this is—I can't believe this is happening. Yeah, this is wild. Anyway, they saw the the <laughs> word poking around on the porch. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the- the parents were? Yeah, yeah, they were getting... Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Is this actually being discussed on the podcast? Yeah, it's not live, though, so if you're upset I about it... She, she can't hear her on the other line. Oh, yeah, you can't. I'm you gotta, talking like, to her. <laughs> A- anyways, uh, Addie, um, it was nice talking to you. And- yeah, nice talking to you, too. Uh, remind me to never answer your calls again. <laughs> oh, wow, well, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I, I was just curious, Addie, that's all. So, anyways, uh, glad that you could reconnect with uh, Mitch's sister and, you know, the whole deal. So, yeah, say hi to Mitch her for first me. Name, but I can't think of it. Her first name? Yeah. I know you're not good with first names. <laughs> I'm not good with. Wait, what's your name again? Carleen. Car- I was going to say Colleen, oh, yeah. honestly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Carly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because they stayed in like a, a camper or something at their wedding. <laughs> You guys stay at a camper at the yeah. wedding, Carly? Uh, what? They, they like brought a van. No, I, I, <laughs> I, I, talk I, I, thanks, thanks for the memories. Uh, my sister says you guys <laughs> talked and thanks for the memories. So. Oh, lovely. Yeah. You know, this. No, I have, I have to when the campers are rocking, don't come a knocking. That's what the <laughs> say. Oh, this was really fun, guys. It's like five degrees of separation between a <laughs> and a Barons. Well, it was nice talking to you, Addy. Um, hope- Tell Mitch I say hi. Oh, you're at work? All right. Sorry to take you. you okay. All right. Bye bye. Sorry. Bye. bye. Well, guys, uh, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How, how mad do you think she sounded? Oh, she's, she'll be cool. About she'll it. be fine. I mean, what- just hey. Just she already knows that I'm stirring the pot, so just throw it all on me. Just all say right. Miles had a gun to my head and he made me call you. All right. Well, that's how we're gonna do it. Yeah. Well, well. Carlene, uh, I don't know where well, we go from this here. Was magical. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I there was three hundred and seventy some people at that wedding, so I apologize for not remembering your sister. Um, big question. What's with the what's with yeah. the camper? Why not just stay in a hotel? Is it because you guys like being outside, like one with nature, or what's going on with that? <laughs> so I was one of those people that bought a bus and then transformed it into a converter bus. So I lived in it for like a half a year when I was traveling from California back to North Carolina, nice. and I just drove it up for my brother's wedding and just parked it in his wife's um yard because they had it at her parents backyard and so i just i didn't want to drive or take the shuttle back to the hotel i was like i'm shutting this place down so the amount i just stayed uh, right at the venue the amount of layers on this call that we just (laughs) i'm scared to peel back another one i'm scared to what we might find charlie we're deep in the matrix it may find out that yeah I just, I'm scared to find out what's next. So, uh, this is why you don't steal wishes from children. It's a bottom line. <laughs> don't, don't be scared. See, this is why we shouldn't procreate. Apparently we're little troublemakers. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm. Well, uh, we appreciate you calling in. This is, this was fantastic. Um, I think Charlie learned a lot about his own family. I did. Just like I learned a lot about yours entirely too much about your family. Um, but yep. <laughs> we appreciate you calling in and, and maybe we'll get a follow up, you know, some point, maybe, maybe we'll yeah. get, maybe we'll get Mitch on the line. See if 
what what kind of cahoots he's in and uh, go from there. How's that sound? I mean, that sounds great. I'm sure he'd get on. He's a little more like, like conservative than me. I just put it all out there. You ain't conservative if you're a p- I can tell you that much. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. Very free <laughs> with the willy. So. <laughs> all right. Well, all thanks right. for calling in. <laughs> Talk soon now. Uh, I'm going to try to get off the hook with my sister, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay. Sounds great. I'll Thanks tell so her you much. say I hi. Appreciate you guys. All right. Bye bye now. Yes, please do. I will. All right. Bye, you guys. All right, Charlie. We got to set the record straight. We know your sister. It, 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 your sister's married, right? Oh, my sister's married. She's happily married. Happily Hasn't married. seen Mitch. You know what? I think she hates Mitch, actually. Yeah. It never would happen. No, she'll be fine. I'm sure she'll text me back. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, you know, the thing about siblings is they have to love you. Well, that and you have so many, you can afford to lose a couple I of can, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've I, got a lot of them. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, getting X communicated from one of them isn't the end of the world, right? Yeah. You I know, only got three siblings. I lose one of those. That's 33%. You're only losing one twelfth. That's true. I can't, I'm not good with percentages, but it's that's less than 10%. Less I can tell than you that 10%, much. probably around eight, nine, seven. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's funny. I think about my family and my sister, she's a, uh, anesthesiology assistant or anesthesiologist assistant, assistant. to the anesthesiologist. Yeah. yeah. Well, she, my point is, is she's dealing with like people and she's dealing with, you know, sickness and everything. And then here I go calling her in the middle of her work day. She thinks, Oh, maybe it's important. Charlie doesn't call that often. And, but just think you would have been tossing and turning tonight if you wouldn't have got that call under your belt, you know? Yeah, that's true. Well, it was I'm, really for your mental health. I'm glad we put this to bed. Yeah. The, I'm glad we put this to porch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next caller. Hello. Well, hey there. How, who do we got on the this line? Is, <laughs> this is uh, Dave Elliott. I'm calling from the Chicagoland area. What was your name? Dave. Dave. Dave from the Chicago land. Which land in Chicago are you from, Dave? Oh, man, I've lived in almost a, whole, a good number of the suburbs that I'm currently calling from Carroll Stream. Oh, okay. Colonel Stream? Carroll Stream? Carroll. Carroll Stream. Stream. Yeah. I didn't even know where Carroll Stream is. I never is. even I knew there was a Carroll Stream. I'm going to confess that. Yeah, Carroll's got a stream. Yeah, wow. for sure. <laughs> uh, so what's going on? You're actually more you're actually more right about that. I thought it was named for a body of water, but it was named for a person. Really? Indeed. And her, oh, her name is Carroll a- Stream, then. Wow. She sounds like a good, good gal. Yeah, she does. Uh, we'll have to look her up on the Wikipedia, find out what makes her so special she gets a city named after her. But good for Carol. Dave, though, <laughs> let's shift focus to you now. What's going on? What brings she, you here oh. today? Well, oh, big fan of the podcast and of you guys, and saw that the number was posted. thought I'd give it a try. Well, so I'm well, honored to talk to you both. No, yeah, we're honored I'm to glad, talk to you. I'm Thanks glad for you called in. Why don't you belly up to the yeah. bar with us, though, and tell us on your mind. What, what do you got? Oh, well, sure. So, uh, one of the things I'm wondering about is I always love the, the bits that, uh, Charlie, you make about Father Tom. Oh, yeah. Father always, Tom. <laughs> always laugh a bit. And the uh, reason why it makes me laugh is because I myself am the pastor. And, okay. uh, Wow, you're a pastor. Hey, Dave hey, the pastor's hey, on the hey, show. Different church, same altar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're more right in a lot of ways. That's I think you're right. There's so many different denominations and connections that actually make us more united than separate, but You know what? I'm already that. starting to uh yeah, I'm feel feeling, a little bit like uh Feeling good. I'm feeling the pastorness like come yeah, through. I you mean, know, he's he's preaching to us, and we don't even know it. I'm picking know? up what he's preaching oh. out right now. So, well, there we go. So continue. Uh, yeah. yeah, where are you, pastor at, Dave? So actually, I'm calling from uh, from work right now. I finally uh, calmed down a bit here in the afternoon. Our uh, congregation has a food pantry here in the building, and uh, they uh, they go through one o'clock, and it's really busy throughout them, and finally quiets down a little bit. So. It's, 
Oh, yeah, nice. Sometimes actually buckle down and get some work done. Did, but did you get then permission? I saw your number. And- did you get permission from your boss, God, to call in today, or what? Yeah. Oh. Did God tell you to call well, in? I can't say directly. I try to pray often, but you know the way God speaks is always really interesting and. I've never heard a burning bush or a loud booming voice, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> but he did have he, a, he brought you the number today, so I think that that's yes. uh, I think that's a sign right there. By the you way, know, what be. what's the food pantry if people are in town and around want to bring food over? Where they where can they bring it? Yeah, so it's a it's a part of an organization called Neighborhood Food Pantries. It's here in our uh, we host one of their pantry sites, and um, so I. Ooh, what is the website for them? I think it's just nfp.org. And uh, my uh, congregation site is Lutheran Church of the Master. That's where they can bring donations and such. They're always looking to, to do more good here in the community, which is fantastic. Hell there yeah. you got it. Dave, but, I got a question. And Miles, you just said sure. hell yeah to a pastor. Heck. Chase Louise, you know. Sorry, hell no. Sorry about, about that, Pastor hell Dave. No. no. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, no, do not apologize. Words are words. All words are words. Well, in that case, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, huh? I got a question. When you're a pastor and you're okay. up there pastoring, okay, what are the things that you see? What are the telltale signs that someone in your pews is not listening? Ooh. Mm. Well, I don't want to be ratting anybody out. Well, I'm not oh, asking you to rat no. anybody out. I'm asking you to rat everybody out. This is what uh, all people do when they're mostly, trying. Mostly me and Charlie are wondering is if the, <laughs> if the priest or pastor can tell that we're not paying attention. Yeah. How do you know? You know, I'd, I'd say it's 50-50. Uh, is what, what tends to grab my attention is uh, of my two boys in the congregation are making noise. That always makes me smile. I don't know if they're trying to get dad's attention or what, but that always makes me smile. I think motion might be the biggest thing. If somebody's walking up and leaving. Ah, yeah, that's, that's a that, good sign. That'll be a good t- <laughs> What that about good sign. Uh, if they're sitting there? Now, I, I'm not saying that I ever do this move. I'm not saying that I've ever seen it happen. It probably doesn't. But if someone were to happen be crossing their arms with their chin in their chest, with their eyes closed and every once in a while their head bobs a little bit. Is that a good sign that they're not listening or are they listening so intently that they are, <laughs> their body's giving out? Yeah. That's you a know, good it, question. It, it could be, it could be both. Could be both. But I, if I ever see that happening, I kind of take the same approach I did when I was a, a high school math teacher before I became a pastor that, if that student is falling asleep or that parishioner might be starting to doze, well, then shoot, that might be what they need the most right there in that moment. <laughs> yeah, you All know what? Right. <laughs> we yeah. need more pastors like you. He just needs a nap. <laughs> Give him a nap. Do, do you have uh, nap space in the uh, church? or sh- If I'm falling asleep in church, should I just continue sleeping or should I just go home and take a nap? Should I excuse myself and say, you know what? God's telling me to take a nap right now. What do you think? No, I don't think you need. I don't think you need to excuse yourself. No. All right. No. Yeah. Just right there. Snooze in church. S- sawing logs while he's trying to preach. <laughs> yeah. What if? What if Miles snores? What if? What if he brings some snore into your? I'm guessing. What if? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Why? Because well. I got a big neck. <laughs> Actually, no. I've heard you. I've heard you. Okay. Remember that cabin? Yeah. 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 Uh, Ooh, that, whoa. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I don't need to tell everyone about our special yeah, trip I'm to the a, cabin. I'm work to. Almost work to incorporate it in somehow, but I think you kind of started to drive around a bit of my my question. I mean, we've just uh, come through two years of a uh, pandemic, technically still in it, and I'm wondering for any perhaps church you guys have ever been in, what is something that has made you feel comfortable or welcome there? Because the church has this phrase they love to say all the time that all are welcome. And I certainly believe okay. all right. that it's tr- that it's true, but. Sometimes it gets, you know, overused as more all they're welcome as long as you're like us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh All right. So the question is, you're wondering what really makes you feel comfortable at a church? Not yeah. just, you know, not just all talk saying everyone's welcome. What actually makes you com- feel comfortable? And I'll just jump out ahead right. here first. Number one <laughs> thing that makes me feel comfortable at a church is if they got snacks. If there's a snack when I okay. walk in. 
I can tell you this much. I'm going to be uh, already like, okay, you got me. I'm now ready to snack, <laughs> sit down, and listen. Miles is a snacks guy. So. I don't know if you could tell that about okay. me, but I like snacks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's that's very uh, interesting. Now, Maybe complimentary coffee is also a big oh, one. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. Oh, yeah. For sure, yeah. We're Lutherans. We've always got coffee. It may not always be great coffee but there's always some somewhere see yeah. that's different from catholics catholics uh don't have any of that in church uh the, sometimes though one sunday a month you leave and they got a donut day for some reason in the back and yeah. then you can go get a or, donut or the are like the lions made breakfast for everyone the, the, the lions, lions club, club. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah or the rotary or something like that yeah, yeah. so charlie and i both grew up catholic so uh yeah okay. so i'm i'm actually okay. you bringing coffee to the the table i mean that's pretty good <laughs> now sounds pretty good usually all we get every sunday is a sip of wine and that's it you know and i always thought about this uh pastor dave you know let's yeah. say uh you know you, you uh, the the spirit of what you're saying i think is that uh you're trying to make sure all people sort of feel welcome there do you ever like uh just go out to the bars and do some recruiting you know you ever just start doing some recruiting there you know like hey what are you doing talking later over at this spot you ever do it i mean priests you know uh, oh you do do you have a bar bible study that's a good way to kind do of, it yeah so uh the first call i was in i had it we called it drink in the word and uh then looking to start it up here in my new congregation as well i haven't had the opportunity much yet because of pandemic stuff but indeed yeah starting with a more discussion-based kind of bible study we hold it in just, uh, some local establishment nearby and kind of put up a sign that, hey, this is who we are, this is what we're doing. and I think another yeah. good way to make everyone feel welcome is use lots of sports analogies, right? Yeah. You uh, you, you want to do, uh, if you're doing the, uh, the parable of the prodigal son, right? That's right. Oh, yeah. that, you could do the parable. You, you could ahead. do a, hey, it'd be like if Brett Favre left the Packers <laughs> – Went to the Vikings. <laughs> and then defrauded the state of Mississippi. And then went back to the Packers and won a Super Bowl, right? Like that's what you could you could use those analogies that could that everyone can relate to. I can't relate to, yeah. you know, the whole uh the actual story of well, it, but I can relate to that. Well, I get right, it. Yeah. I mean that's what parables were. They were Jesus trying to relate a story of something known to that particular community at that particular time. So let's, yeah, they've always got to be retold. Yeah, let's re uh let's re update the parables for now. That'd be kind of cool. Like Pastor Dave's updated parables. So you just take all the parables with Jesus in them <laughs> and then you just make them all about the bar and fishing and hunting sports. and sports. And then uh, before you know it, you know, you got your own uh, book you can sell. It'll be a New York Times bestseller right yeah, there. And you want to make sure you use cool hip lingo. You know, it's not your wife. It's your old ball and chain. You want to use terms like Ooh. that. And then people will be paying attention. Yeah. The it. old ball and chain. New lingo. Yeah. <laughs> n hasn't Miles's I'm lingo sure hasn't been updated <laughs> since 1954. Oh, marriage, in the, marriage in the Bible is already complicated enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and that, well, actually, that one doesn't need to be updated. That's still the same. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, there's. Yeah, you can't put a definition of biblical marriage out there. There's just so many different examples in there. It's like, wait, what? No. Yeah, that's true. That is that is very true. You know, I, I think the Bible is interesting because I think, you know, a lot of people really try is. to say stuff, you know, because the Bible says Are you just saying it. that because you have a pastor on the line? <laughs> No, Tell I'm the not. truth, Tyler. I'm not. Charlie. I'm not. I'm being honest. I think. I think if you if you read the Bible, back me up on this, Pastor Dave. Have you ever read the Bible? I've read the ton of the Bible. Okay. Yeah. Not just a couple lines that they made you read in CDC class. No, growing up. I wrote enough lines for my stand up bit as well. Uh, but I I will <laughs> say the pa the the Bible says so many things that whatever you think the Bible says, and you're telling people you got to do this because the Bible says it. I think that says more about you. And does the Bible? Because the Bible says almost I, everything. If you read it closely, yeah, I think you're, I think you're spot on, Charlie. Yeah, you can, you can pretty much make the Bible say whatever you want. Like if you, if you have an idea of what you're trying to say, you're going to find something in there that'll back you up. Yeah, it's got to be the, it's got to be the backwards of you got to read it for what the uh, scriptures are trying to say to you. 
Right. Here's a Bible verse. Uh, I think what you're talking about is interpretation. Interpretation. Yeah. yeah inter- oh, now Miles. It's you all should, about interpretation. You, Pastor Dave, you should look at the way Miles is looking at me Pastor right now. Pastor Dave, can you? Oh, no. He's looking at me like he's a he's a freaking philosopher. He's, he's dang was, near ooh. rubbing his beard, you know? Um, <laughs> Pastor Dave, if you wouldn't mind ooh. rifling through the Bible for me quick and finding out how oh. I can, uh, where it says in there that I can drink 100 beers oh. at the bar on the weekend. Weekends, so then I can tell my fiance that I just did it because the Bible Ooh. said so. That would be. I don't know if you're gonna. I don't know if you're gonna find scripture saying that, but there's no, some, but it's a, but we can interpret it that way. Of, just something we can ah, interpret that way. I don't know. There is the first miracle of the Jesus where he turned the water to wine. Okay, Boom. there All it right. is. And by wine, they meant beer. And they meant that <laughs> you have to drink it all because you can't take it home with you. Boom. Boom. 100 beers. Boom. Wow, look at that. You've so if you really... Want, if you want that, sure, it can be there, but <laughs> you'll find, you find some more support for beer from Martin Luther himself. He was quite the beer drinker. Martin Luther. Oh, jeez. Oh, so Why'd you have to bring Martin Luther that's into this? A t- that's, you where you, that's where me, Charlie, and you have a little bit of a yeah, divide. We should have left Martin Luther. Uh, <laughs> this is why I don't hold the door for Lutherans, because yes. they might just nail oh, another 95 no. theses to it, Father. Yeah. And it's a glass door. <laughs> I just called you Father Pastor. That's what I meant. Oh, no. Okay. Martin Luther, good I, guy, you know, probably, no, he, I, <laughs> you know, yeah, he's a good guy. You know, he had his pluses and minuses. He was good with a hammer. Good. I with mean, him. I don't necessarily, <laughs> I don't necessarily blame him. I don't like going to confession. Either. <laughs> I know. You either. know, <laughs> it would be so nice to be able to just lie in bed the next day and be like, Hey God, sorry about last night. <laughs> we good for today or what? <laughs> you know, that would yeah. be, but you know, yeah, it's how it goes. Well, anyway, did you learn anything here, uh, <laughs> Pastor Dave, or did we just uh, lower your uh, uh, faith in uh, humanity? Oh, God, nothing lowered at all. Not at all. It's just, no, I love the, uh, I mean, a lot of my, a lot of my members are, are former Catholics, and so it's a familiar Familiar ball game for sure. That was just okay. a, such a dig there. Yeah, I know. That, that was such a low key just dig. Just a bunch of Martin Dave, Luther like, sitting there. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, a lot of the, all the people filling my pews every Sunday, they used to be Catholics, you know? Oh, I, no. I, I, see. I, said this, I said there's so much more that you the same between all sorts of Christianity than there is that's different. Right? That is true. God is love, and all yeah. who live in love live in God. That's a Bible quote. So, yeah. you know, if you live in love, or you live in God, you live in the same thing, Miles. Just think about that. And wow. I love you. I love, love you, you, Charlie. Yeah. And I love me because I love my neighbor like I love myself. Amen. Right? That's wow. the line. Well, there you uh, go. Pastor Something Dave, like I, I think we all learned you know, a lot today. I think at the end of the day, we can just say different church, same pew. Different church, same pew. Yeah. And, and the pew's in the back because I'm not sitting in the front. Yeah. And I yeah. might want to sneak out early to catch the Packers. Yeah. Sneak out maybe, uh, especially after communion. I'm out of there. They don't but, have the communion in the Lutheran well, deal. Yeah. Oh, sure see, they, they, oh they, you do? Hang on. They no, got the it's communion. Like a, it's like once a month. Oh, it's once a month. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh every no! Week. Every week. Oh well, you gotta. Hey. Every week. Is every it a service. is it a white wafer or is you got the 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 unleavened bread? Is it unleavened or is it leavened? Oh, well, we've we've done both. Yeah, with pandemic, we went back to this the single wafer. It's changed a lot now because pandemic and we're and we have things and. Contestant, we, currently we've got the wafers at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, right. I, did you have you ever had unleavened <laughs> bread? I mean, yeah, that's I, pretty good. Yeah, I like those way mean? better than the wafers. Oh, wait, there's I, some there's some really good recipes out there yeah. for communion bread. Are you guys mm-hmm. making your own communion bread over there? I had before. I'd like to get back to it, but yeah, I had some tasty stuff. Hey, let's make unleavened bread great again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? What the hell, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> what? Was it ever not great? Every, yeah, I, it's always been great. No, I, I, uh, been more great. so bring it back. Oh, he wants to bring oh, it back. Oh, oh. Many, wait, so many wafers. Aren't the there. wafers unleavened? Well, All wafers are unleavened, right? I mean, I don't, is, is a wafer even bread? Do you, you even know? know what unleavened bread is, yeah. Miles? I literally made it in grade school. Okay. What's the difference then? <laughs> it doesn't rise. <laughs> but Jesus yeah, rose. No, the wafers... Wafers are bread, is in flour and water. And- yeah, hey, uh, 
your interpretation of wafers is that they're bread, just like the Bible, you know? Could we ever use, like, Nilla wafers? Yeah. Can we? Or is well, that disrespectful? Could, could our interpretation well, of it be like we could, we could make nutter butters, you know? Oh, nutter what, butters. People got pretty creative when we uh, were doing worship purely online. We started to do communion. We'd invite our, our members to try to grab some, find some bread and some wine nearby. Or if you had just other elements, we... Uh, so, it got pretty interesting in the pandemic, and I heard some stories that people were uh, indeed did use a, a cookie one Sunday and some water or cookies that, and milk. That's and, smart. Yeah, that's you good. know, fry. They had to know. be had to be resourceful just being at home. Oh heck yeah, heck yeah. See, I'm See? already a changed man, <laughs> Father. I think you did, Pastor. You've done so much good, good for us here. You did. I some keep wanting to call you Father Tom, Pastor yeah. Dave. I'm Pastor sorry about Dave. That. You did some good work today. I'm gonna have another beer. Stop saying hell. I'll I'll say it. heck more. And uh, yeah, I'll raise a beer with you. Yeah. Well, uh, right. we appreciate you calling in today. Yeah. Cheers to and, you. Uh, all. If we're ever Thanks in, uh, if we're ever in Carol's stream, Chicago, sure. yeah. we'll have to, uh, we'll have to swing on through. We'll, we'll be in the back, but we'll be in the pew. We'll be there. All right. I'll keep my eye out for you. All right. All right. Sounds good. Have a good one. Bye bye now. Hey, I'll tell your folks to say hi. Yeah, and watch for deer, okay? They're rotten. Oh, you betcha. Oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yep, yeah. yeah. Great guy. Yeah, he was a great guy. He did, you know, I could have gone off the rails. He uh, he was definitely patient, yeah. as a pastor should be with us. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think we all learned something today. He was today. slow to anger. Uh, rich in kindness. Rich in kindness. I was like, what is the next one? I don't Thanks know for one after that. Picking but. it up. Um, no, that was really good. And I think. Um, it was I, really hard for me not to just be whipping on all the Catholic knowledge that I got. But, I know. You know. I kept. I called him good. father at least three times. I know. You know? I know. Shoot. Yeah, he'll get over it. Hopefully he's praying for us. I could use it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Couldn't we all? Yeah. All right. All right. Hello. How are you today? Uh, hello. I'm doing great. What is your name? My name is Jess. How are you? Jess? I'm I'm yes. doing good, Jess. Where, where are you calling in from, Jess? I'm calling in from Canada. Canada. Oh, yeah. Oh. You're calling in from Canada. Eh? Oh, Miles is doing a, a bad Canadian impression. And uh, Jess, <laughs> what did you think of his Canadian impression? Was it good or was it lackadaisical? It was laxy daisy. Oh, okay. Come on, Miles. You can do better than that. Okay. Well, tell me this. When was the last time you were at a Tim Hortons? Pardon me? Yeah. She said, pardon I me. I didn't catch what you said. Oh. When was the last time you were at a Tim Hortons? <laughs> it's been a while since I've been at a Tim Hortons. I don't really like Tim Hortons very much. Oh, okay. Well. Excuse me for laughing. Yeah. Uh, why don't you belly up to the bar with us and tell us what's on your mind, Jess? I would love to. I got a, I got a quick question. Have you ever been on some weird ass date? I mean, I, uh, I've been trying to find the cheese to my cookie, and all <laughs> I'm finding is the fiddle deliverance or the whole to Wonderland. <laughs> So you're in the dating scene is what I've gathered, right? <laughs> Did you just say I want to find the cheese to my poutine? poutine yeah. <laughs> That's what I said. Oh, okay. my God. I'm going to be honest with you. Charlie and I have been doing this for a couple years now, and we've never heard that one before. No, so kudos to but you. That, we're, that deserves to be on a shirt. <laughs> so you haven't found the cheese to your poutine is what you're saying. I have not. I have not found the cheese to my poutine. Okay, well, talk. There's a yeah. to my beaver. <laughs> what? Wait, Wait, say on. that again. What did you say? I said I haven't also found the dam to my beaver. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you just keep talking. That's what this podcast is going to be. You just keep rambling. That's all it's going to be, Charlie. We'll just listen. What else do you got? <laughs> What 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 kind of what kind of uh, dam are, is your beaver looking for? <laughs> the, the the good kind. Okay. Well, did you just ask her what her beaver is looking no, for? No, she did. She's no, Miles. I did, let's let her talk. She's saying 
gold here. What what are you looking for in, in um in a dam? In a dam. Oh, well, you know, the, the, the good kind of, of, you know, good kind of logs for my dam. <laughs> logs. Okay. <laughs> so you're just looking for, well, let me, let's, <laughs> let's break out of what, the analogy. What word. size log are you looking <laughs> for? on that whatever one will do the trick okay are you looking for one log you looking for a couple what's how many logs we talking (laughs) just one just one okay so it's gonna be pretty weak dam is what you're saying (laughs) (laughs) that's that's right it's gonna be a weak dam hey no 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 it's got to be such a good log that it is the whole dam is what you're looking for is what i understand a log to fill the dam is what I am looking for. Exactly. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Well, how are you going about finding this log? log? <laughs> well, it, I, I've uh, tried some different avenues, but they all lead to some very strange things. What's the strangest thing you've you've been led to? Uh, well, I went on a date and he took me to a uh, taboo show, which, you know, I'm the kind of gal that's willing to get into the white panel van with the promise of candy and puppies. But um, that one was a little different when he um, left me for his sisters. <sighs> Oh, there's a lot to unpack. Okay, can we? This is what? the second call from Canada that's been absolute that's bananas. Gone we had down. the silver slurper. Earlier, yeah, and yeah, now. and now this. So, can we just start? This is so great. Okay, Let's you know, unpack. This I don't want to sound too innocent here, but explain to me a taboo show. Yeah, that was my question too. It, it is the the naughty but nice sex show. So you. So what, what that, goes on? You get to do that in Canada? We get to do that in Canada. They come through and they're, you know, they're an interesting, an interesting process, program. But you can go and, and do all kinds of stuff there. I was rocking the pole dancing and the party bus. And, you know, some people have a bag of bags. I got a bag of sex toys. Okay. okay. <laughs> so you know, I mean, I, there's more more uh, toys in there and tricks to make Mister Rogers blush. Wow! Yeah, I mean, I'm wow. yeah, I, a, I'm blushing a little right now to be honest. It so is. it doesn't just take Mister Rogers, and I can promise you this: I ain't no Mister Rogers. Yeah. Um. So be- it sounds like the tipping point was him leaving with his sisters, which is a fascinating thing. Was he going home to their folks' house because there was a family party? Or when you say go home with his sisters... Are you in Red Door? No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> well, you, you, there, there's someone there who sounds a lot like you. And, uh, <laughs> so when was the moment you realized this had gone south on you? Uh, well, like I say, when, when the sisters showed up and he left with the sisters. So the sex, uh, the bag of sex toys was like, Hey, you know, I can look past the bag of sex toys is what you're saying. Well, well, the sex toys became because I was rocking the pole dancing. So you got those as a reward for pole dancing. Yes. And no, I don't work in a strip strip club. I actually... We were never going to assume <laughs> I that. I danced through a, through a studio, and I have one in my basement, too. Oh, wow. Well, very good. So you're getting practice in at home, Miles. You know, if you're looking to... Uh, you, uh, Miles I have is- been looking for a pole dancing club to join. So you're saying you know a good one? Well, I have one in my basement. I don't know if it's a good club to join. I mean, it's yeah. parties only, usually me and the cats. <laughs> to start pole dancing, the cats you, are you, looking. You and a bunch of cats. Okay, okay. Um, when someone's oh, looking, no, not a bunch of cats, just one cat. Oh, oh just okay. one cat. That okay. is important to note is- since you are looking for. Uh, okay, so one get a cat. Thing. Two, what kind of stripper pole am I looking for to put in my basement? Oh well, you want you want the 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 good stainless steel about an inch because you know. god forbid you get any stains on that thing that would be bad you don't want to see 
the the strip. It's important. You're laughing, but it's important. Yeah, you don't want to. Wanna- you don't want to see the pole dancing that came before, you know? You want this to be a fresh start every single time, right? You do want it to be a fresh start, and you got to make sure that thing stays clean. I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Okay. So, <laughs> now, I this is, we do have to get to this point. When you say this guy leaves with his sisters, where is he going with his sisters? Uh, that was the part I'm not really sure where where he exactly went with his sisters, but he left with his sisters and left me there by myself. Okay, before we get into how we're going to find you a, a good log, yeah. Um, do you think he wanted to take you to a taboo show because you had mentioned that you do a little uh, pole, pole dancing with your cat in the basement? Do you think that that tipped him off at all? It might have tipped him off. It might have. Um, but like I said, I'm I'm down for I'm down for whatever. Okay. Down for whatever, but not him leaving with his sisters. Can I just clarify this? Because I've been trying to several times. He wasn't like leaving with his sis like he and his sisters weren't like hitting it off at like this he was drunk show, and they picked right? him up, is what you mean, right? No, they showed up there, and um, he went home with them. But when you say went he home went with home. them, like to a family party or to something? Uh, like they perhaps, dropped him off at his house? Like what kind of going home are we talking? Is this a Joffrey situation? <laughs> Joffrey situation? Have you what seen Game of Thrones? Joffrey is the product of an incestual relationship between <laughs> uh, Cersei and... <laughs> Spoiler alert, dude. Oh, Sorry. Sorry, Game of Thrones exactly. thing. It could have been because I was getting the weird deliverance vibes. I'm, I'm okay. not lying. I just, I'm going to be honest. I didn't want to be the one that brought up the I word. I didn't want to bring up incest, but oh. Charlie did. So you think it was or wasn't an ancestral relationship? Uh, oh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, oh. I was like, I was a little baffled by that he left with them, but... You know what? Uh, whatever you do in your family, you do in your family. <laughs> <laughs> so big Game of Thrones fan on the phone. It's nice. <laughs> um, okay. okay. All right. Let's so, move on to let's find a, let's, find her a good guy here. What kind of guy really makes you tick? Give us the three things that you need in a Canadian fella. Oh, he's got to rock some um, bib. Bib overalls. He's got to be able to rock those and look damn good at them. I agree with that. Bib overalls, number one. What's number two? He's got to be outdoorsy. Outdoorsy. <laughs> now, Continue, you're, gotta be outdoorsy. you're doing great so far. What's number three? Number three is he's got to be into some whiskey. <laughs> it sounds like you're looking for a Midwest man. <laughs> You might have you been need looking. to head a little south and head to the Midwest. Sounds like you're looking for a Midwest fella. What do you think, Charlie? Well, I think that might be the case. Now, I feel like what you just mentioned, you should be able to find all around Canada. And if you cannot, the Midwest has its doors wide open to you because, uh, you know, outdoorsy whiskey overalls, overalls, bib overalls. Does he need to be wearing a shirt under the overalls? Yes or no? Um, no, as long as he's got a nice sprinkling of chest hair. Not too much, just a nice dusting. If, you know, so just a if little. If he wants to go, I'm all right with that. All right, a little taco meat is what you're looking for. I like that. I like that. Charlie, can you provide yeah. any taco meat to the situation? Yeah, uh, yeah. so I, I have a little taco. Is that what you're saying? Do I have a little taco meat yeah. on the chest? I do, actually. Thank no, no, and, and I. I sorry, yeah, but yeah. You, you did on one of our episodes early on. What'd you wear to the bar? Oh, I wore bib overalls he, he, to the bar. He wore bib overalls. It was on my birthday, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I um, went out in my birthday. Were you rocking him and looking pretty fine? Oh, oh was oh, I ever? Oh, was he? I mean, I tell you what, I had to fend some women off with a stick because they were trying to not let us do the podcast because he was looking that fine. I was rocking them bibs. I tell you that much. And well, there's. 
Yeah, there's something to be to quite desirable about the bibs. I mean, it's much better than the, the skinny jean men that wander around. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's some guys who can't help wearing skinny jeans. They buy regular jeans. <laughs> and down south here, we call them American thighs. And sometimes regular jeans turn into skinny jeans because you got a little extra meat on the ball. Some of us can't help that, all right? So cool. Yeah, but you can't be the kind of guy who's showing up with the skinny jeans, going, you know, going out and doing some outdoorsy stuff, and yeah, and then you end up, you know, getting a little, you know, frightened of the noises in the bush, (laughs) and then he pushed me down, pushed me down, and like took off running. But the trick was on him was I had the keys to my truck, so you know what. Have at her, buddy. <laughs> Time out. Okay, hold on. This was another date you were on? You were in the woods and a guy this pushed you down? another date I was on. Like I said, have you guys not been on some weird dates? These are, these are the kind of men in Canada. Okay, I mean, I, I can say I've never asked a woman to a taboo show. And I don't, I don't think I've ever pushed a woman down in the woods. Yeah. So, and, no, I cannot relate to this. And whatsoever. I don't know anyone who's going home with their sisters here. I mean, is your uh, what's your dating app? Twenty three and Me. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's not Twenty Three and Me. And it's uh, it's good old, you know, Facebook match, whatever it is. Okay. Tinder. <laughs> but um, these are the fellows that are out there, and like I say, when he, the one that when we went hiking, he wanted he wanted to come. I was going by myself, and he wanted to come with. And I said, okay, so we're going in. And yeah, he heard a noise, and he totally like just pushed me down, and like took off. And, but he was also leaving a nice trail of trail mix behind because he thought that he could find his way back with that. <laughs> He's just attracting bears. Yeah, just like they're <laughs> leading them right to him. Um, well, I mean, in his defense, not to defend the guy, but in his defense, you don't got to run faster than the bear. You just got to run faster than the other person. So he probably was trying to get a head start with the old push down. That's all I got to say. He really pushed you. To, like, was it an accidental? He got scared and just. Was it snowy? Was it? Was it? Uh, yeah. What? Was it, was there a lot of ice? And he brought his dog and the dog leash wrapped around my ankle and I fell and he was gone. I definitely had a better date with his dog than with him. This is so bizarre. Where do you find these this guys? This guy sucks. This guy sucks. Like, yeah. Like, it, yeah. was he? What, was All he, right, Charlie. What? You hear a bear in the woods. What do you do? Well, what kind of bear are we talking about? doesn't matter. What, any bear. What you do you figure do? out what kind of bear it is first. <laughs> are no, you the kidding? answer is you get in between you. You go bear, you, then the gal. That's the answer. You always make sure you're in between the gal and the bear. That's number one. Well, is it a polar bear? Because if it's a polar bear, we're just, no, we're just all, we're just sitting there. It's we're done. So no, Miles, if you're wearing your skinny jeans, then it's push the gal down and run for the hill. <laughs> I can't. So skinny jeans by choice, not by body type, right? Uh, no, they were they were definitely they were skinny jeans that by you know. It, he showed up wearing like really dainty little shoes too. Who the heck goes hiking in dainty shoes and skinny jeans? So you you walk back to the car and he you have the keys to the car. Does he apologize for pushing you down? No, he got mad and he said that I'm crazy, crazy. Um, <laughs> because he thought that I was going to get him lost in the woods. <laughs> I mean, this guy's insane. Yeah. I don't even now, know where you find a guy now, like that. For for a moment, we've been saying all these guys are insane. I am curious. Where were you hiking with him just to turn the tables? I was going into a place called Kananaskis. And when you go in there, because there's, I like to go in and there's a place where you can watch the golden eagles come through on their... Uh, Migratorial path. Oh, cool! So I was going to do that, and Buddy wanted to come with. He thought it would be cool, and that was where it happened. 
Yeah. Oh, well, okay. That sounds pretty normal. Well, that sounds pretty great. So there's a website called FarmersOnly.com. I think you're looking more that speed than you are Tinder up there in Canada. I think if you're looking for a farmer ain't pushing you down, he's going to be wearing overalls, one. Yeah. He's not going to be wearing skinny jeans because he's wearing overalls. Um, And he knows how to handle a bear or two. I don't know if that's how you're feeling, Charlie, but I think that might be a good option. He'll versus- either know how to handle a bear or he'll have just enough gusto to think he can handle a bear. Yeah. And, and then either you get way away free and yeah. you might have to handle the bear, but yeah. that's what we're looking for. That's a real gentleman. You right deserve there. a guy, you know, you deserve a guy who will, who will go after a bear. I was going to try and make a log joke there, but it didn't quite work. <laughs> But you see where my head was going. Yeah, it turns out you need to stop looking for logs and start looking for farmers. Yeah, but I'm wondering, are the farmers going to be, you know, a little on the deliverance side? Well, you've already gone down that road. I hate to say it. So, you know, you might as well try, you know, Um, it's not going to get any worse than a guy going home with his sisters. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, we're pushing you down. your Midwest then. I was down in Minnesota a few weeks ago and I will say the Midwest men are quite quite gorgeous. Oh. oh. Gorgeous. So I see what this is about. She's trying to pick up Charlie on this podcast. Hey. Oh, is that what you're trying to do? Yeah. Are you trying to pick me up? Sure. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> sure Charlie. If you're, if you're not going to push me down if we go for a hike, then, no. then sure, I'm if I'm ma- here to pick you up. If it okay. makes you feel any better, I've never seen Charlie push anyone down. So Mm-mm. you got that going for you, Charlie. Yeah. He's wore bibs. He's got some taco meat. I've seen him drink a couple whiskeys here and there. <laughs> Whoa. I think we just had a match made in heaven. Matchmaker, matchmaker. Give me a match. Can you do tequila too, Charlie? Oh, can I do tequila? Oh, <laughs> it's God. on my rider. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've well, seen you, you do tequila. You're, you're my kind of man because I, I like the tequila too. I well, tell you what, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to let you guys have your first date here. I'm going to turn my microphone off. Charlie, take it away. So uh, <laughs> you like walleye or no? I do. Yeah. I do indeed. What's yeah. the, what's the biggest walleye you ever caught? I have not caught any, but I I like going fishing and doing that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, that's I, nice. That's nice. Yeah, I like I like walleye. You like looking at them. You don't necessarily need to catch them, but you like looking at them. Uh, yeah, and I like to just go and you know be out there. So if, oh, if yeah. somebody else is doing. You know, I'm 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 there. You know, I'll fillet any your walleyes story. any day of the week. I promise you that. Okay. This is getting hot. Now, Alrighty. you were talking about golden eagles, right? Yeah, he's a bird watcher, yes. by the way. Did you see it? Yeah, I, I, I've been bird watching before. I got some nice knocks. You got a nice oh. pair. Of, you got a nice pair of knocks. <laughs> I, I have a lovely set of knocks. Okay. I actually have. Let her I finish. I have a couple of pairs that I take. I have an old pair of. Uh, Pentex, and then I have a new set of Bushnells, but okay. Bushnells aren't as nearly as good as my other ones. Is that uh, what they're calling them these days? Is Bushnells? Huh? I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> what have you seen uh, through through your pair of Knox recently? How do you hold your Binox? I hold them with two hands. Okay. Two, hand, two, two hand handfuls. It's yeah. a nice, it's a nice pair of Knox right there. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've uh, actually, yeah, if you go into this one spot, the golden eagles fly over and and you get to see the, the trumpeter swans come cool. through there, too. It's oh. a really cool little spot. Well, I imagine I, that yeah. those birds, you want to see the birds and your birds want to see the knocks. So I, I totally get it. All this bird talk is making me pretty hot and bothered. I got to <laughs> let you know that now. Nah, just, just amuse me here. Do you ever see a golden eagle? Go in, talents yes. down, come up with a perch. Oh, no, I haven't seen that. Because oh. when you go out to this little spot, they're flying over, but you can like you can check for their bands to see and, and all that other kind of jazz. It's kind of an interesting thing. So you can go at the, like in the early kind of mid-fall and also late March they come through. So you can see some pretty cool things come through there. You ever seen a red-breasted merganser? I have actually just a couple of weeks ago down on the river. Yeah, you have. <laughs> Were they doing the courting, their little courtship dance? No, 
there was just there was just the one. And actually, I was out with with my aunt. We were out for a walk, and she thought it was a pileated woodpecker. I'm like, no, I no. think that's <laughs> common misconception. Jeez, Louise, but that that makes me so sad. <laughs> you no, know, I your aunt's got to know that. Was I mean, it, come on? Was it a male or female red-breasted merganser? It was a female. It was definitely a female. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie's favorite. He loves the female. I, I, I breasted Merganson dance. You, you, you bet you I do. You bet you I do. That makes me sad to see one lone female red breasted Merganser out there on her own. I bet you the male that she was after went home with two of his sisters or something. <laughs> <laughs> Probably did. Probably did. And left her all by herself yeah. down there on the river. That breaks my heart. I would never leave. A, a, a lone red-breasted merganser out there just to fend for herself in this cold, cruel Especially world. Especially wouldn't push her down. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I'd get right, I'd flap my wings all over that bear. Tell you that right now. Ian, did you also know that there's, like, I'm into the, the, the great horned owls are kind of my jam. You might be into the to the others, but I'm into the great horned owls. So and if you can find their nest. So I know this is bird nerdy. No, but no, no. You, so when you're say, they're when they're young, you say, you say you're a little into Hooters as well. Miles, <laughs> Miles, do not talk to my girlfriend like that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky. Well, she's we're, talking about Knox and Hooters. I tell you what, this is starting binoculars. Sorry. You know, this is a Christian show. Okay, Jay Squeeze. That's right, Miles. Sorry, I'm sorry. You know, he's, you know, taking it to a different kind of level. Oh, yeah, I it's, am. I know it's, it wasn't the guy taking you a taboo show, leaving with his sisters. That was, yeah, that wasn't a new level. Miles is just jealous because he's the third wheel on our date right now. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it's exactly. fun to watch. He's, he's a little left out. Oh, well, th- I we, we're going to have to have a second date. I think that's all there is to it. So why don't you send Charlie I, a DM oh. and... Uh, we appreciate you calling in. This has been wow. I did not think that Charlie was going to get a girlfriend on this podcast, but here we are. I found love in a hopeless place. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We're birds of a feather, so we flock together. Oh, oh that is hot. Oh, oh my, God. my gosh. I am getting I'm gonna need steamed a cool up in rig. here. Yeah, this is. Whew. I may, I can't imagine how you feel right now. I'm ready to jump in a river and dam up. Uh, yeah, uh, I was gonna say I saw deal. the bar bar top raise up a couple inches. Oh. But, uh, now, Miles, you had to take it there. You know, what? can you believe what he's doing? Be a gentleman. I'm okay. Sorry, I'm sorry. He says he's sorry, and I apologize for him too. Okay. If Miles is the bear exactly. in this situation, right. I'm fighting him right now. <laughs> Well, uh, like I said, hit up Charlie at this podcast. Thank you for calling in. This has been great. Um, Canada never seems to disappoint on this podcast. No. You guys are some good folk up there. And, hey, glad you got yourself a boyfriend on this podcast. That's pretty awesome. So you guys will go bird watching sometime. And uh, so, uh, what what'd you say, Charlie? Watch out for bears. Yeah, watch out. Uh, you want? Know I'll watch out for bears. How does that sound? True gentleman. You watch out for the bears. And if you definitely do want to come to Canada, I will take you out and we could go do some bird watching. Oh, there my gosh. Go. Wow. All right. Well, well thanks for calling in. This has been date. awesome. <laughs> That's right. All right. We'll see you soon now. See you soon. Have a good night. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, what will we will? Well, I think that went pretty good. <laughs> are you I'm, sweating right nah, now? I'm, I'm feeling oh something. God. Yeah, you are feeling something, are you? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, I'm ready to. I hope, hope you're okay with me, uh, you know, pushing the whole dating scene hey, for you. You know, it's what friends are for, you I, know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Right there, we just had a blind date on this podcast. First, first time, blind first date. time yeah. blind date on the Belly Up Podcast. See, folks, anything can happen here at the Belly Up Podcast. That's why you got to keep listening. That's why you got to keep bellying up every week, every week. All right, let's take another call. Welcome to the Belly Up Podcast. Who are we talking to today? Hi, uh, hold on, give me one second. My boss is talking to me. Okay. <laughs> hey, how's it going, guys? I'm surprised. What's You're surprised. Up? I'm sorry. Who are we talking uh, to? Sorry, my name's Ethan. My name's Ethan. How are you guys doing? 
We're doing good, Ethan. Wait, is this the same Ethan that we've talked to in the past? Yes, it is. Okay, uh, <laughs> he's back. Ethan, give us an... Ethan, Ethan, uh, Ethan. I think we should do a quick recap of the last call, and then I'd love to get an update. Miles, you want to do that? No, let's recap? have Ethan do it. All Ethan, right. tell the folks what we talked about last time. Oh, geez, Louise, what happened last time? Well, last time... <laughs> You know, I think you guys are doing much better. You guys go ahead and give it a shot. I want to hear you guys talk. You guys have a beautiful voice. Last time I think you were talking to us about some uh, red flags turned green by your uh, goth girlfriend. Is is that about accurate? That's about accurate. I'd say something like that, yeah. And she was, uh, you are thinking of moving in with you and your dad. Yeah. So about that, you know, about like... A week or two weeks after that video was posted, she uh, she went ahead and moved in with me. So that was a bit awkward. Okay. Well, did the video help or hurt your cause? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In in all seriousness, I saw that video, and about like thirty different people kept on uh, adding me and sending me the video, saying, "Hey, is this you? Is this you?" And I never expected that video to be blown up as the way it did. It really did blow up. I mean, who would have thought just you not knowing the specifics of how long you were dating somebody? Um, I think that yeah, might so have been long, the hook. Yeah, how long have you guys been dating now? Uh, i say a good six, seven, eight, nine months now. <laughs> uh, there we go. I think that's a good ballpark. Yeah. I think that's a good ballpark right there, honestly. Okay, well, why don't you give us an update? You now are moved in. It's you. Your wonderful goth girlfriend and your dad, how is it going so far? Well, so far, so good. Uh, she was planning to move in at the end of last month, but a lot of things happened between her and her family, and there's a lot of bad juju going on. So she moved in uh, while she was down for a couple of days visiting me on a weekend. Uh, so it was a very abrupt and very sudden thing, and I'm still trying to get used to it, but... It's a lot. It's a lot. I didn't think it'd be like this. Is this how it's like being married? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. That's why Charlie's no longer married. Well, you know, maybe I was a lot. Here's the question. What is a lot about it? What what's what's the big uh the big issue, the biggest conundrum you've run into yet? Oh, just space. Really? There's like I she have a lot of stuff she has a lot of stuff and she's moved in like in the middle of last uh month and we're still moving all of her stuff in i'm trying to find places for it i just ain't got no space for it what i mean what's what is it clothes stuff is it clothes is it clothes clothes her figurines she's got a lot of like uh anime figurines again she's more asian than i am it's it's really a wonder It's, it's like shell shock really uh but it's, it, it feels like a lot of stuff, a lot of figurines, a lot of clothing, a lot of artwork, more than me. You know, I have like one photo and I hang on the wall and I go, beautiful, makes my whole blank wall look like it'll look amazing. While she's butchering me about it, saying, oh, it's bent at a 45 degree angle. It doesn't blend in with the wall and everything. <laughs> I'm a man. It only takes one thing for me to be so happy, be so satisfied. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure you got going right now. What is, what is the picture that you have hanging on the wall? Oh, it's uh. so when I was in Las Vegas, uh, seeing my sister's concert one time, I was walking around the strip and I saw a guy doing like spray paint art. I thought, <laughs> oh, that looks really nice. Oh, yeah, that looks really nice. It's like a like a Bob Ross uh, painting of like snowy mountains, pine trees, a river flow and all that shit bang. And was it spray paint or was it actual paint? Uh, one of the two. I okay. think it's actual spray paint. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I imagine that looked great. And so now what did she do? Is she hang a bunch of her own stuff on the wall or what? Not yet. I mean, she doesn't want to go through everything because it's all mine. And I work like 10, 12 hour shifts. So I just don't have the time. I come home and I'm like, where's the fucking, uh, sorry, pardon my French. Where's the food? She's out cold. She's asleep. She She's awake at the night. I'm awake during the morning. It's cold, switch polar opposite type of deal. It's just, it, it's a lot. She hasn't hung up any of her stuff. Well, I hung up a little bit of her stuff, but 
not a lot. We're like going through the whole moving phase still. Well, what, how tough is it to just throw a nail in the wall and hang some of her stuff? I mean, yeah. are you that dog tired that you can't put a few nails in the wall? Yeah. Especially if she's cooking you dinner. Yeah, you know? it, uh, that's fair. You know, well, actually, in fact, I'm cooking her dinner, but she, she brings it up. She goes, oh, I'll cook some dinner. No, you won't. You're going to sit down. I'll cook you some dinner. That away. Okay. What are you it's making good. her? Okay, fine. All right, fine. Well, ramen noodles, that's it. Ramen <laughs> so noodles. I know how to cook. There you oh, go. So <laughs> tough. Yeah. Hey, uh, when you said you were in Vegas uh, for your sister's show, is your sister performing? Yeah. So she's an artist. She uh, she sings a lot. Okay. Uh, this was like way back when, though. Oh, got uh, it. Know, back in maybe 18 or 19, 20, somewhere around there. Uh-huh. Uh, 2018, 2019, 20. Yeah. Uh, her name's Carlia. She does a lot of singing. She's pretty cool and all. Nice. Okay. Nice. Well, okay. So your girlfriend's got a lot of stuff. What does your dad think of this situation? Oh, man. I don't know. I haven't asked him. He comes <laughs> around. I'm, I'm making ramen. I'm just minding my own business. I'm waiting for these eggs to boil, boil. And he comes in. He's just, hey, how's it going? And I jump out of my pants. I'm easily frightened. And we start talking. And he goes, so are you guys going to eat anything else but ramen? And I go, that's all the woman wants, man. <laughs> <laughs> I said that's easy. That's good enough for me, man. That's good enough for me. Have you guys gone out on any like uh, fun events? The three of you. You guys gone on any uh, dates where your dad's the third wheel? Uh, no. Uh, thankfully, no. Thankfully for the Lord, no. Do you know how awkward that would be? Oh my goodness, we would not even talk. I, so a coworker of mine said, "Hey, you want to come out to Dave and Buster's with me and my wife? You can bring your lady along too." I go. Sure, let me ask her. And me knowing full well deep and down that she's going to say no, I walk around the corner, I wait for about five seconds, come back around, she go, I go, yeah, no, I don't think so. She, she's got a whole lot playing on the table. Like what? I got to think of something. Uh, <laughs> Uh, laundry, laundry. She, she's got a little laundry to do. She can't come in on that weekend. How about the next weekend? Yeah, the weather's not looking that good either. I'll have to pass on that, you know? It's like a whole ordeal. Yeah, so why, I mean... I'm going to be honest. I don't know a ton of people that would turn down a Dave and Buster's invite. Why doesn't she want to go to D and B? Oh, dude, trust me. I would love to go in D and B. You know, they got that guitar hero. I love to play Boston on there and look like an absolute spoon missing every other note, but she just doesn't like to socialize. She'd rather stay inside and pet my fat cat and uh, just sit down and play games. That's it. And I respect it. I mean, that's less money for me, you know, but Guitar hero? Hey man, I'll take I'll take that any day. Okay, since she's moved in, what's been the best moment and what's been the worst moment? Uh okay. Best moment I think is when she's taking a shower, I bust in, I pull my trousers down, and I start taking a big old whiz right in front of her and she starts laughing and yelling me to get out. And I tell her, All right, hold on, give me a second. And then I pop a squat and then stink up the entire room and then leave afterwards. <laughs> Uh, the worst moment is she takes up the whole goddamn bed, and I I, I sleep in a king size bed, and she likes to eat chips in there all, once in a while. I go, all right, yeah, go ahead. You know, we have TV propped up at the foot of the bed. I go, yeah, go ahead, do your shebang, do your thing, whatever. I go to sleep, and uh, me personally, I like to sleep like a free man. I sleep butt old naked, and I get some crumbs in every crumb and every crack in my own body. I'm like, oh, ew, ah, what is this? It really affects my sleep. And she takes up the entire bed, which is impossible to do on a king size. But I mean, you do it anyway. <laughs> no follow-up questions. <laughs> <laughs> so that really affects your sleep, huh? Just crumbs everywhere? Yeah, sometimes I'll lay down. Three seconds later, I feel like a cactus is stinging me. So I get up and I go, God dang, crumbs all over the bed. I'm smacking. I'm hitting it. She whispers it was her. I'm smacking and hitting the bed, getting them all over the floor. I go, listen, next time, take it down to the dinner table. But there is no next time. It's always the dinner table. It's always the bed. <laughs> so she's on a heavy diet of ramen noodles and chips is what it sounds like. And she's still skinnier than a twig, man. It's unbelievable. I wish I had that body. I'll tell you what. 
<laughs> so the best moment, um, let's just revisit yeah, that I, again. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot you're, to unpack you're, you're here. You're peeing in the shower and then you're squatting down. What What are you doing in the shower? I'm, I'm taking the shit in the toilet and filling up the whole bathroom with my oh. uh, people. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. So now it sounds like though. Yeah, I'm throwing a is, stink bomb in there while she's so, in the shower. So this is an unbelievable move. All right. So it sounds to me she's in the shower. You go and you start peeing standing up, and then at some point you decide to go number two and you reverse it and sit down on the toilet. Is that accurate? Well, you see, sometimes I like to switch it up and I like to pee standing, uh, sitting down and then poop standing up. But if I'm really feeling normal, then I'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, pee standing up and sit down and then poop. <laughs> it really depends on the type of day. So she gets pretty mad. I mean, what is she end her shower sooner? So I she mean, get out I mean, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say mad. I, well, maybe a little bit mad. I mean, Brandon, I mean, you, you take, I don't know, for example, let's say, I don't know, your sister, or, uh, your brother or whatever walks in. Well, I guess man to man, that's different. But your sister walks in and she takes a big old honk and hoagie down to the toilet, sinking the entire place up. You know, it's, while you're taking a hot, steamy shower. You know, it's not very nice because then you got to immediately hop out if you have finished. You know, there's a whole process to it. Well, that was going to be my question. Has she I done the same to you? Though. Does she retaliate with it? No. No, 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 no. That's the thing. She won't even fart in front of me. I'm like, when are you going to pop a little toot in front of me? She goes, <laughs> why do you care so much? And I go, that means you're comfortable around me. You know, she goes, I will never do that. This is disgusting. I don't think I'm ever going to do that. While I'm in front of her, I'm ripping it like it's a Beyblade, you know? <laughs> Did you say ripping it like a Beyblade? Is that what it was? Like the yeah. little toy that you <laughs> Beyblade, Beyblade, let it rip, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Have you guys gone on any dates uh, since she's gotten there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually really just uh, recently got back from the city. I took her up there because a brand new, uh, uh, like, a Japanese ramen joint opened up. And she, like I said, she's way more Asian than I am, too. She's, she's way more Asian than I am. They go in, and she sees all these figurines from all her different she, shows. She goes, oh, this name, oh, this name, that name. I go, that's crazy. They all look the same. And she calls me racist for that, but I don't understand. <laughs> Oh, uh, fun story, fun story, true story. Went to a Chinese market with my mom. She, she's full-blooded Chinese. And I lost her one time. And I kept on walking around in the entire place. And I can only see the back of the head of them. And I kept on thinking every single one of them was my mom, but it wasn't. I kept on going up to them and saying, Mom, Mom, Mom. They turn around and I see them. I go, oh, sorry, my bad. Oh, my bad. Oh, sorry. So now we came up with like a whistling thing. You know, I'd whistle, she whistles back. It's kind of like an echolocation type of deal. <laughs> It's a true story. I'm not racist, I swear. <laughs> what, is, what does your mom think? What does your mom think of that? What did your mom say? Uh, think of the uh, whole whistle situation yeah. and me getting lost in a Chinese supermarket. <laughs> Both. Both. Huh? Both. Both? Yeah. Uh, she fully understands. No, she fully understands. She fully understands. Who's she agrees I, with me, actually. Whose idea was it to do the whistle program? I'm sorry. Say that one more time. Whose idea was it to install the whistle technique? Oh, me. I get. E I, I like overthink a lot, and I get super confused. And I go, "All right, I'm just gonna start whistling," and then uh, she whistles back. And, like I'll do like a, I'll go I'll go uh, like a. And then she'll whistle right back at me, and then like a lost dog to the owner, immediately sprint back and yeah. find her. Yeah, I like Hopefully that. Hopefully, don't get it confused with any others. Well, I was gonna say is if you, if there's, if you run into any issues of uh, any gals thinking you're like cat calling them, whistling at them, or has that been? Uh, yeah, uh, little little twelve year old me is cat calling uh, guys and girls, whistling at them. No, it was like a system I made when I was uh, a wee little. Lab. Oh, this is a while ago. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was a long, long time ago. Okay. No, yeah. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, so, I mean, this, your girlfriend lives and breathes ramen noodles. I mean, I have never met anyone talk about ramen as much as you guys have. 
Like um, she, she's full on college student. She's on the college student diet, Adderall and ramen. <laughs> <laughs> so she's still in school. Is that I forget? She's still in school. Uh, no, she's not in school. No, she isn't. What's she doing for a job? Did she get a job down there? Uh, not yet. I told her, hey, you know, well, she actually just got back from working a uh, fireworks stand from <laughs> late late June to 4th of July. So she got paid for that. She's like, I don't know what, $800, $700 for that much. Uh, and then she came back and she was like, you mind if I have like a week vacation? I should... I, I said, you know what? You brought home like seven hundred, eight hundred dollars. Uh, sure, I'll let you go ahead and do that. But then you gotta find a job, and I'll help you find a job. What are you thinking? What kind of job are you thinking about trying to f- help her find? I don't know. I have a friend that just started up her own nail tech business. So I was like, hey, you know, there's an old childhood, well, not childhood, an old teenage friend of mine that I knew during high school. His girlfriend is opened up like a nail salon business so you know i might talk to her and uh, see if i can get you a job there would you be interested she goes oh yeah i'd love to do that i'd love to do that i go all right sure yeah i'll go ahead and talk to her i never did (laughs) (laughs) why not uh i just forgot i'll be honest with you okay well this is your reminder to call your buddy and see if you can get her a job yeah, but that's the thing. That means the king at Midwest goodbyes. I'll tell you what. I go, hey, man, my old grand, my 1999 Grand Marquis can only fit about, like, two boxes. Could you, I'll buy you a 30-pack of your choice, and uh, if you, and, uh, like, $40 worth of gas, if you want to come up to KC, help me put some of her stuff in your truck and then drive down to my place, man. That's a free 30-pack and 40 bucks of gas right there, baby girl. He goes, yep. Uh, I might be able to do something like that. Yeah, hold on. Let me call you back. Hangs up and then never replies to me ever again. <laughs> okay, so that that connection may no longer be there, is what you're saying. I mean, it's there, but is it really though? That's the real question. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that you might have to find another lead on a job then. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is she uh, applying? Is she putting any applications in or anything like that? <laughs> No, not yet. You see, there's a thing going on at my job, too. Uh, the owner of the company recently came down to my department and said, so we were told that you guys think you're the best department down here. And I'm like, oh, hold on now. <laughs> now that I may believe that, but I never said any of that. Nobody in here in this department has said that to anybody. I don't know how you got that unless you can read my mind, which I doubt you can if you can't Professor X. But... I've never said that about anything. And then he said, well, I know you guys want raises, and I'm not one to come down here and pat you guys on the back, but you guys aren't doing a good job. Or something of the sort like that. So we just basically got told, to, yeah, go screw ourselves, and you're not going to get paid or anything. I go, all right, dude, that's sick. I'm going to find a new job. And recently, I just went up to the HRI woman, and she goes, why, why is your performance lacking so much? I go, well, this is the reason why. That's the reason why. They go, huh. Too bad. I go, damn, all right. So we'll see what's going to happen. Uh, I'm, I'm going to apply to uh, a couple other places and see if I can get a job there. But a lot of my coworkers have seen that clip that you guys posted on your Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, so on and so forth. And they really thoroughly enjoyed it and keep on telling me that I should become a comedian. Even my supervisor saw that at one point. Yeah, I think he, I said this on the last podcast. You should. You should get up there. There's some clubs in Kansas City, you know, just start doing open mics. And just start talking about your life, honestly. Yeah, maybe write a few. Yeah, but well, like, what, what do I start out with? You know, I can't be like uh, Larry David and walk up onto a stage, look at everybody and say, ah, never mind, and walk off. I got to start with some, I got like no material. I don't know what to do. I don't well, know what to well, here we go, Charlie. This yeah. is your wheelhouse here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so, talking to a decorated. Yeah, coming from the Charles and stuff. Yeah, you're coming. This yeah. is a decorated uh, stand up well, comedian you have on the line. So, Charlie, give him some advice. Well, first bit of advice is write five facts about yourself and then write punchlines to that. You know, so write five facts and then just try and write a quick punchline. Less words is better. That'll that should give you something around three minutes, which should be a good thing to kind of get your uh, bearings. You know, a lot of the stand up, the open mics give you three to five minutes. So that's a good start Mm -hmm. right there. And the other thing you got to remember is you're going to get up the first time and you might bomb horrendously. I have a feeling you can probably just keep talking yourself into uh, 
you know, into some jokes, you know, like if you just get up there and start talking, you might find some jokes. I wouldn't rely on that necessarily, but just get up there and uh, you want to be comfortable bombing. So you want to be comfortable getting up there and nobody laughing and just holding your own. Uh, I think you'd be good at that. And now, here's a question. Has anyone ever in their hot five just gone up and only done crowd work? Because I think this oh, sure. m- Ethan could be the guy. Yeah, I mean, Ethan, you could definitely get up there oh. and do some crowd work. That's for sure. But if the crowd... I, I've definitely thought about that, but I don't want to rely on that. Yeah, you... De- you Right. So just start writing. So know that you can p- probably do some crowd work and, and fill the five. Here's the thing you're going to want to do is record every single set you do. Uh, because you might find some jokes, some things you say on the fly that you forget after you say it, but it was really funny the way you said it, because you get this adrenaline when you kind of are up on stage, no one's laughing, and you got to, like, dig yourself out of the hole. You get this little adrenaline hit, and sometimes that helps you find some really good jokes, but you want to record it because you'll forget it shortly thereafter. I say give it a go, man. You're a funny dude. I'm definitely thinking about it. A lot of people have said that I'd definitely be good at it, I said, eh, we'll see. I, I, you know, it's, I don't know. I, I got to really do it. And if I, if I go out there and I bomb, then I bomb, you know, I'm going to get in the city. I'm never going to see these people again. And if I do, that's going to be an awkward run in. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I yeah, mean, I mean, I think I'm that that's, thinking about doing it. Yeah, that's the right mentality to have. I think Yeah, just go do it. You don't need to think, uh, look up where there's an open mic and what is Kansas city closest city to you. Is that right? Uh, a populated city near me, yeah. All right. All right. Go to Um, Kansas City and do an open mic. Yeah, just Google Kansas City open mic. I'm doing it right now. I'll give you an option here. Kansas City open mic. All sorts open mic. Friday, 6.30 to 9.30. Um, Poetic Underground. Open mic night plus poetry. Uh, (laughs) So, you know, you could also do poetry, too, Ethan. Poetry tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that would act. You should do. You should try slam poetry. I think you might be kind of good at that. I did that once. How'd it go? Slam poetry. I'm thinking about just doing like a naked modeling business, you know, letting people see my ass for free. I actually know I get paid 35 bucks for that. What? What? How did we get to nude modeling, Ethan? We were done nude modeling. Is that what you said? Oh, no, but I mean, hey, it's 2023, you know, you know, some people like some good old blue collared beer belly Asian looking fellas, you know, they want to see that little gut with a little bit of stretch marks who don't. Yeah, I mean, hey, I don't know, you know, (laughs) I'm just messing around. I'm not going to do that. I'm too self-conscious. It sounds like he wants to spread his cheeks on OnlyFans. You know, I would be worried about the nude modeling because you might get crumbs everywhere. (laughs) That's uh, you, hey, you know, some people are into that. Some yeah, it might be your that. niche. <laughs> crumbs, crumbs in the crack. Yeah, that'll be my niche. <laughs> that could be crumbs and crack. There yeah, you go. there you go. That's my handle right there. Well, Ethan, we're very excited for you, man. You're uh, how old are you again? 22, 23, 24, 25? Um, uh, Somewhere around there, but like minus one. I'm like 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, oh, okay. somewhere around there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, you got a bright future ahead of you, my man. Uh, yeah. Get out there to that open mic. Uh, it's on the 14th. What what or what or day is today? That's the 11th. You got three days. It's get on 11? over there. All right. And what's the place called? <laughs> Uh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Charlie is now your manager. <laughs> all, all sorts open he's, mic. He's my manager for the short. I'll pay Patty like five bucks. All yeah. right. Listen, all sorts open mic. Get there. It's uh, 6 30, 9 30. Get there early. Get there at six o'clock to sign up. It's hosted by um, local Iris Applequist. Sign up 6 30. Never mind. Shows at seven. So get there, 6 30. Sign up. You'll probably have three to five minutes. Write those facts about yourself or just go riff. But all you got to do is get up on stage. That's the hardest part. Just give it a go. Get up on stage. All right. I can do that. And one more time, the place, because he cut out. Oh, my God. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm hard. I'm hard of hearing. Charlie, Charlie, now you know how your manager feels. (laughs) (laughs) It's all sorts open mic. It's 20. All sorts. All sorts open mic. That's what it's called. Um, the PH Coffee. So it must be at this coffee house, PH Coffee, 2200 Lexington Avenue, Kansas City, Missouri. Looks like it's Friday nights, uh, 630 to 930. So you got a few days. All righty. 
Okay. All uh, right, I got a few days to prep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, we want another update on how the stand-up goes. Yeah, so we next do. time we're recording in a couple months, you got to call in again. And uh, then we can uh, get an update on you how the stand-up this, went, that's good, a good, bad, I- or otherwise. That's a good idea. You should film your set, bring your girlfriend with her, with you, uh, have her film your set, and then we can analyze your set right here on the Belly Up podcast. How's that sound? <laughs> you said anal. <laughs> Sorry, I'm easily distracted. Yeah, I, I'll be more than willing to do that. I'll be more than willing to do that. Sorry, my bad. I get easily distracted. I'll be more than willing to do that. I'll have her uh, film it for me. And she's been very supportive about it. She told me that I could probably do well. But so we'll she thinks out. you're we'll funny, what too? Uh, what? She thinks you're funny then, too? Because my wife does not think I'm funny. Yeah, she uh, she thinks I'm pretty funny. She goes, yeah, some of your jokes land. Some of your jokes don't land with me. I go, all right, I'll, I'll remember that next but time. But taking a uh, dump but, during the shower <laughs> always good. lands. That joke always lands. I'm going to warn you about it. Right. A lot of times it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. 2023 is not going to land that much. It's uh, a coin toss. It's you a coin you toss. never I'll know until you we'll try. You I got to can... work the crowd. All right. Yeah. You go work the crowd and let us know how it goes. All right. All righty then. Thank you very much for your time, boys. Thanks That's for calling good in. Good to talk God. to you again, man. We'll Glad you you're doing good. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now. Oh, good kid. I am so glad he called back in. I am too. He, I love that kid. He's a great fella. Him. Great fella. He's going to get out there. He's going to bomb a few times. I, he might not, though. He's... <laughs> Well, every look, everybody bombs at some point doing stand up. So he's going to have to do that. You want to bomb at some point. Yeah, I don't know. We might have found our Justin Bieber, you know, <laughs> I I think we got to take him to the moon, I hope Charlie. He, I hope he does it. I hope he films it. And I, it'd be great to watch. I would. I yeah. want to see it. I want to air it live so on this in podcast. Three days, should we go down to Kansas <laughs> City and show up? And just be like, where are and you, And then dude? he doesn't show He's up. He's like, I'm a couple, two, three, four, five hundred miles away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good to talk to him again. The internet, the internet, uh, they like Ethan. I like Ethan, too. Me so as I'm well. I'm glad he was able to come back on. So, guys, what a way to end this episode of Bellied Up. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just everybody cross your fingers for Ethan as he uh, ventures into this new uh, new job, potentially. Yeah. Passion. We should have. What we forgot to do is tell him not to quit yet. His oh, yeah. other job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it kind of sounded like he was putting all of his eggs yeah, in that basket. Hopefully he doesn't quit that other job until... He could bomb a few times and then start to take off. He's a smart guy. I think he'll figure it. Hopefully figure he it listens out. to this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll, see. well, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Bellied Up podcast. Charlie, I might have to try the old uh, taking a number two while the wife's in the shower. You know, see Miles, if they get mad I or can't not. say I recommend that. And I think <laughs> Anne would, um, you know, smack she's, you around a little for that. So mad. She'd be pissed. So mad. She runs the show in that relationship. Yeah, that's a little for bit. Sure. I watched yeah. her beat your ass in pickleball yesterday. Okay. I, you were sweating was, up a, a it storm. It was hot out. She didn't break a sweat, The though. wind was not in my favor. It was a whole thing. Okay. So just. The ball has holes in it. The wind's not an issue. All right. All right. Well, well, guys, don't forget to tip your bartenders. We'll and, see you uh, in the next one. Yeah. Bye-bye bye now. Guys.